Welcome to Backpacker Radio, presented by the Trek. Today is January 8th, National Bubble Bath Day. I love baths. Do you always have bubbles? I don't even have a bath anymore. Um, <laughs> you have a pool. It's like the world's biggest bath. Yeah, you can put bubbles in that. No. Um, you blow bubbles. True. You can blow bubbles. Uh, no, I've always been a bath person. Yeah. Like growing up, there's a time where you shift from being a bath child to a shower big kid. Yeah. Not for me. Bath kid all the way. It is a great way to de-stress. Yeah, I used to take naps in the bath, which I've now learned is quite dangerous. Yeah, pretty dangerous. <laughs> yeah, like hours. Like I would take like hours long naps <laughs> in the bath, dangerous. and I'd wake up when the water would get cold. I'm glad we're not reading about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so. your co-host, Zach Badger Davis. Sitting to my right is... Hi, I'm Juliana Chauncey, a.k.a. Chaunce. Uh, I guess let's not bury the lead. If you're watching this, then you would notice that we are in a new, beautiful studio, brand new studio in uh, downtown Denver. No, I'm kidding. It's the same studio, but we have a new wall. Yes, we do. We wanted to snazz things up. We've been talking about doing this for the better part of a year, maybe longer. Yeah. But uh, we finally pulled the trigger. Um, should we tell them the story about it, too? It's I'm sure there funny. are many, but yes. Uh, so, yeah, we decided to get some wallpaper to put up like a nice foresty pattern behind us to, as an explanation to anyone who's not watching. Uh, and so we ordered the panels. Um, we figured there doesn't seem to be much of a difference between the peel and stick version and the Lux version, apart from the Lux claims to be like much nicer. So we were like, okay, we can do that. Let's get the Lux. And it arrived and we unboxed it and took a single, like a singular look at the ingredient list of like steps and like you had to mix plaster yeah it, it was like three seconds of me looking at this sheet and being like yeah we're not doing this yeah it, we came fully intending to do it like yeah. we were ready to start it was going to be a team building experience yep. there were going to be some laughs some mistakes and uh yeah my life flashed before my eyes when i just envisioned all the things that could go wrong because this wasn't cheap no it would be a bad thing to fuck up we would have not had anything on the walls and we would have Marga brought up a great point at palooza where she said that we probably all are in much better of a getting along state oh, yeah. that it we would been be. A fight. Yeah, it definitely. <laughs> we would have started off the weekend all just mad at each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, shout out to my guy Chris McClure who did an excellent job putting this up. This is what it should look like, and yeah, now we are officially an outdoors podcast because we're outdoors. Um, couple reminders before we get to today's interview. First and foremost, I guess not first and foremost. First is, uh, if you are taking on a long trail in 2024 and want your journey featured on a large thriving outdoor platform, we've got just the spot for you. We are currently accepting blogger applications and would love to feature your journey. And can't give too many details quite yet, but we have an exciting update with the Trek. So 2024, I'm hoping will be a banner year for the Trek world because got some exciting things cooking. That's you haven't all. told me the exciting thing. No, I'd be happy to share with you yeah, just me. as soon as the light's off. Okay, the, the camera's off. Tell me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> the other thing pertaining directly to this podcast is we are looking for a new intern. Yes. We've got some changes happening with the podcast. Uh, we are growing, fun stuff. Right now, we don't know exactly what we're looking for. We're titling it as a Swiss Army Knife role. Some loose expectations are social media savvy, um, ideally somebody with a good amount of backpacking experience, and pie in the sky, we're hoping for somebody local to the Denver Golden area. What gaps did I leave there? Yeah, it's going to be a mishmash. Um, no one's getting fired. Mara, Rachel, Sarah, they're all good. I mean, they get fired all the time. They, yeah, they, but not in like a serious way. Um, so this isn't a scary thing. It's more so like as people's plates get full, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we're not overloading anyone and that we are like periodically going through and making sure that they've got the tasks that they like to do the best. And, you know, the ones that might be a better fit for someone else, we can find someone else to help pick up that slack. And so we've got like a running list of a couple things that are just like no consistency, but just a general stuff, um, that it's getting time where it could be helpful to add another person. And so we're trying to think of how to best take these things and make them into something with some sort of consistency. Um, all that to say, like, we are just looking for someone who fits the vibe, right? Mm -hmm. Like a backpacker, does long distance hiking, 
ideally local so that they can come to things um, as needed and understands the community um, and the tasks that we're looking for between the social stuff and the other random stuff like none of them are super skills required you know so basically it's going to be someone that's just like a great fit in general that can also handle um like simple tasks on a reoccurring basis yeah Local with room to grow vibe check yeah and definitely room to grow with this one so uh if you enjoy this circus of a podcast and live in the area hit us up we'll i don't know if we'll have we'll probably have the application in time for this podcast so yes hit yeah. us up it, we could set that as a goal yeah. for ourselves and lastly, but not leastly, if you would enjoy additional Backpacker Radio content and or just to support the show, we have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Backpacker Radio uh, for January's episode, which I guess would have gone out a couple days ago or yeah, last mm -hmm. week. <clears throat> uh, we did a game show of sorts with the full team. So we had Mara in town for Palooza. Obviously, Rachel lives nearby. And we did a game show, a general trivia show, turned it into a drinking game, ended that with you guys quizzing me on terminology for the kids. That was the best part of the whole time. I agree. Not because it's the part that I came with, you know, that was my <laughs> contribution. Not because of that, but more so because A, like we did the top 20 um, like phrases, slang, if they still call it slang, mm -hmm. um, of 2023. And Zach first tried to define each one of the words. And then Mara went on Urban Dictionary and read us like the example sentence they gave. Yeah. In like what was possibly the funniest accent. Yeah. Especially Mara being so wholesome in yeah. Midwest, especially Wisconsin, just hearing it in her voice is great comedy in and of itself. So yes. yeah. Uh, if you guys would like to support the show and get some additional content again, um, patreon.com slash backpacker radio uh, can support the show for as little as five bucks per month. Okay. Is there anything else I'm leaving out here? It's no. pretty good, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's get right to our interview with Nicole Shotgun Kulovitz. We are joined by today's guest, Nicole Shotgun Kulovitz, who is an experienced through hiker who has hiked on the PCT, CDT, Arizona Trail, Florida Trail, Hey Duke, Pacific Northwest Trail, Oregon Desert Trail, Grand Enchantment Trail, Long Trail, Timberline Trail, Florida Keys Overseas Heritage Trail, amongst others. Most recently, she completed the Loda High Trail this year. I guess if you're hearing this, that would have been last year. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us on yeah. Backpacker Radio. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, first thing to bring up is sorry for the awkward introduction at the meetup <laughs> on Friday. Uh, so I went up to Nicole and with outstretched arms, tried to give you a hug, thinking that you were somebody else. <laughs> you, Not the first. You looked like a previous guest on the show, uh, Amanda Veggie Redpath, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think that's veggie. what she said. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure uh, so that was very awkward for me because <laughs> I was offering a stranger to or a stranger a hug, and um, yeah, you, you turned it down. But we also <laughs> we also got another story. I think it was either Rachel or Mara tried to give you a hug at the end of the night, and you turned that down. So my first question for you is: oh Are you not much of a hugger? Mm. This is super comical because no, if anything, I'm. a too much of a touchy person at okay. times but i guess i'm moody i guess i'm in a mood or something <laughs> turn down hugs yeah. must have been personal yeah yeah i have no idea especially with how hyped i was for winning my first raffle ever Ooh, i you swear win? i won the 100 bucks from cataback nice yeah. yeah so that was tight i made an absolute scene because it was actually at least <laughs> i was like i think that was your number and i was like yes and just i'm hoping someone recorded that that was amazing hi hi of the week last week i tell you that yeah did we, did we share your story about raffle tickets and people not paying attention? No. Is that one we want to share on no, air? No, we'll do it. We'll do <laughs> it I have another time. funny story from the meetup that I learned yesterday. Okay, quickly. Um, which is that like we were supposed to meet people from the meetup um, for like a quick bite to eat before Scout's Book Talk yesterday. Obviously, we were super late with traffic, so they had already eaten, and we just like stopped in to say hi to them before making our way over to the event. Um and it's the girl with the Australian Shepherd that looks just like mine. I'm not going to see her name on air. Mm. Um, but I've seen her at a couple of meetups. Like we saw her at the dog painting one. We saw her at the holiday meetup, yada, yada. Um, cut to a different story. At the meetup on Friday, I see Garrett frantic at the bar. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I've got to get... <coughs> 
a new drink for this person. Their drink was on the chair. I knocked it over. They're really unhappy. And like, whatever was in passing. We went and did something else. Turns out we went to meet the friend and her significant other before Scout's book talk. Garrett told me this afterwards. He got in there and was like, oh, shit. Because that was the girl whose drink he had knocked over. And apparently she was really unhappy with him on the night of the meetup. And, like, they both kind of just looked at each other like, uh-oh. Yeah. Didn't he replace the drink, though? Yes. That but should Garrett, erase all wrong Garrett, so, No, she was she was absolutely fine. Oh, Garrett was just in his head time. like, yeah. oh, no. That's yeah. whose drink I knocked over. Yeah. LOL. Um, so we had a good laugh about that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Back to Nicole. Let's yes. start off with, we haven't done an origin story in a minute. What's the story behind the trail name? Uh, the trail name is comically not knowing how to shotgun a beer and then being <laughs> told how to shotgun a beer. And You're tempting us to it. put you in an awful position right now. To shotgun something? Yeah. I mean, we could go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I, rush, I was making assumptions on the story before you finished. So you didn't know how to do it. Someone cho- showed you how to do it and then you crushed it? Yeah. And then I okay. just, yeah, it was uh, on the AZT um, in Roosevelt. We got, in, we did six miles to get in there early just to hang out and have the day. The pandemic was happening. We were just drinking a lot of beer. Yeah. Abstract's got a picture of a hyperlight or a sticker with the hyperlight with PBRs on the back. That's exactly what we looked like, but with Budweiser's on the Arizona <laughs> Trail that year in the spring. But, uh, yeah, we we were playing my favorite card game, Palace, and we turned it into a drinking game, and we made a rule that if you spilled, you got a shotgun, and I'm over here like, I went to college, I don't have a shotgun a beer. Never shotgun a beer, though. I always did beer bongs and whatnot, uh-huh. so uh, messed up twice, spilling all over myself, and then they're like, okay, you do this, you do this, and then you tilt it, and it's like, okay, bet, so. I'm always nervous I'm going to cut myself, like, because you're stabbing what is this aluminum yeah and then putting your mouth on it just, yeah no, i get always so, so nervous it is definitely i've been very fortunate i don't think i've ever cut myself to be honest and i always hike with like it's like a 34 foot uh, paracord knife so i mean it worked out nicely just to be like yeah. crack it um but yeah that is where the name came from and has stuck since if you so. had to estimate how many drinks have you shotgun since that first one a couple hundred <laughs> honestly you really like, hit the ground running honestly there. <laughs> definitely year and a half span of just shotgunned a lot of beers yeah it's, it's died down a little bit which is what's comical but not in my friend back. group we have an entire fantasy football thread which is guys just shotgunning beers somehow i'm the least shotgunny of the group <laughs> i think like maybe the fa- the past five shotguns i've done have all been here yeah and like Checks on out. a whim where we've been Tight. in a conversation yeah. like this and it's led to pause let's go shotgun yeah let's go shotgun to be real yeah quickly. the next level of the shotgun is the bite shotgun mm-hmm. where like you crack the hole with your teeth <laughs> yeah, that's really how you cut yourself 100 percent absolutely you See, do that enough times you're going to the hospital i learned how to do it with a bottle and a um a straw oh yeah the uh what's that called a snorkel yeah something what? along those lines i learned yeah. how to do that I haven't done that one in a minute yeah. but you, you have like the straw with the air, you hold it and then tip it and then you're able to let it go and it just filters. Yeah, what slows down the bottle is the fact that air can't pass through. So having the straw there allows the liquid to actually pass through faster and you can get it down pretty quickly. And if yeah. like you get like a tornado it, effect, it's yeah, instantaneous. it's just like you can suck it down in nothing. Wow, the more you know. The more yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Got all the alcoholic all tricks the, here. Yeah, all the <laughs> fun party tricks <laughs> yeah. for, your, for this holiday season. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so in your intro, we went through a laundry list of trails that you've hiked. I want to start off talking a little bit. You were a wildland firefighter. Yes, this last season was my first season out in uh, Driggs, Idaho, in the Teton Basin uh, on a fuels crew. How'd you get into that? Uh, my best friends uh, were doing it back in 17, 18, while I was still trying to figure out myself as well. And uh, on trail, I've come across a lot of male and female firefighters, wildland firefighters, both current and past. And they were just like, you've got the energy, you've got the, you've got what it takes to be out there and to succeed and thrive. And I knew that when I was at the point that I was so broke that I had to work over the summer, which was last summer, uh, that I would give the wildland firefighter a try. And it was good. It was great. And I'm hoping to do it at least one more season, see where it takes me. I I struggle with commitment stuff and I don't know what I'm doing with my life, but it's a really fun opportunity to just get out there living in the outdoors and helping a good cause. So 
how did it compare to what you expect? Like for what you would expect to do as a wildland firefighter to what you actually did, where were the similarities and differences? I was I was on a fuels crew, so I ended up cutting a lot, doing a lot more cutting projects on a saw, on a saw than actual hands-on on a fire line um, doing dry mopping or something like that. So that's the only difference. It was what still a really dry mopping? Great, uh, just beat, you're just digging at the, the dirt get to put the fires out. Uh-huh. Um, so you're so, chainsaw girl. Yeah, I was chainsaw girl over the summer. Yeah. Built some upper body strength that I haven't had in the last couple of years since since hiking. So that was kind of like, whoa, look at that back. <laughs> <laughs> when you're around a chainsaw that much, are you trying your hand at any chainsaw art? Because I feel like I'd be going up to logs trying to make bears. <sighs> Man, I know you think you're like, oh, wow, like I can do anything with this. Absolutely not. I keep it very simple with a nice <laughs> little beat to cut and get that thing off and I do not play around with a chainsaw that is and I love trees I'm not gonna lie there was a moment in the season I was like picking and choosing which trees to cut down for certain mitigation projects I'm like I don't want to pick and choose like I love all trees (laughs) you're kind of a you're like a tree killer I mean in a sense yeah Yeah. it was kind of messing with me and it was my supervisor it's his first year and he just finished his master's program so he being very well educated straight out of his grad school he's like so this is the reasoning why and he did the whole you know explained it in depth and like a scholar and you're like okay I guess that makes sense when you put it that way it makes me feel a lot better but this tree, <laughs> like, but this poor tree. But I, I learned to kind of, it's for prevention purposes. So, and even though in the valley, it was the greenest it's been in like 20 years, I guess, over in Jackson area. So we'll see what the future holds with all the extra growth they got this year. But it was a mild summer when it came to fire overall in the lower 48, which yeah. is pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, Canada got the worst end of it but from the firefighting perspective is there almost a is that is that almost bad news like i know obviously for humanity that's a good thing but like if you're out there to fight fires i don't know if you guys have seen the movie jarhead but like he goes crazy because he wants to it's been a long time since i've seen the movie so i'm sorry if i'm butchering it but like he sort of loses his mind because he's all amped up for war it's just like a nothing war and uh it's very anticlimactic in a way because he signs up for something that ends up not being the case. I'm curious if that's sort of corollary to this. Uh, nah, it's still it still hit expectations, and you get you you meet a lot of great people, you network a lot, and it was just a fun activity to do and yeah. have some time off in a really beautiful area to go hike in the Tetons. So, yeah. how I does the it. you mentioned you built a strong back? How does the end of a day with chainsawing compared to like the end of the day through hiking? I mean, upper body versus low. It's more full body is exhausted versus yeah, hiking all day. I'm used to it. I'm used to walk in and cuz you do still hike. I mean, I'd hike with like 70 pounds on my back um with my 45 pound pack and then the chainsaw and um and fuel and whatnot. It adds up and you're kind of like bushwhacking to, to the projects and whatnot but it was yeah just more full body because you're mentally like have to stay in in the zone while you're cutting and it's loud and you like can kind of get uh, when you're when you're cutting you sometimes forget what's going on because you're so focused on and we were working on this one project on this hill that was very steep and so you're trying not to fall while you're cutting these trees so um, just the mental portion I feel like took it out of me a little bit more versus hiking because I'm just, I mean, I'm used to that. By the end of the season, you know, you get used to it. You're trained after six months of doing the repetition, but still exhausting, Yeah, still tiring. What's the application process like? Like, how did you find the area to go to? and What did they have you do? To so hire you? I finished up the CDT 22 in September and the applications were due by the last week or something. I had no idea where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. I probably applied to like 150 different places. I just hit all regions, all states besides California, and just was like, okay, I don't know where I'm gonna wanna go, so I'll give myself options. Why not California? I have such a, it's so expensive. I have a bad taste from California for all the times I've been there. It's nothing personal, but I just am not, I'm excited to go check out Northern California, but I just have not been a fan of California in my life, so. Do firefighters in California get paid more considering the cost of living is so much higher? They might, a little bit, but honestly, I mean, your base pay for it is relatively, I mean, they they accommodate for the the area, so yeah, yeah, probably a little bit, but Hmm. it's so expensive. What percentage 
not like that I need a specific percentage, but are there a lot of other like ladies out there doing the firefighting? Uh, definitely has increased a lot more. That was one question I would ask all the um, folks that gave me a call back is what is the male to female ratio? Like I was on a fuels crew, it was uh, six of us and there was one other woman and I, younger woman, she was like 30, 31 or something. Megan, super dope chick. So um, usually it's, it's mainly male dominant, but there's definitely probably one, one out of eight men to women, I'd say, at least for the the region four I was in. Are you getting like an equal playing field of work or are you noticing like- Oh yeah, know? I'm definitely was probably one of the stronger ones there too. I'd like to, you know, Flex I like that. to think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely held my ground pretty well, so. Imagine that's a good setup for a lady who's single and hetero. I mean, yeah, if, but I don't know. You don't work and play in the same area, man. I that's just a, there was uh, in basic don't tell school. Chance. Yeah, in basic in basic <laughs> exactly. school they're like, just, yeah, in basic school they're like, and don't sleep with your coworkers, man. You got you're working around each other too much for too many hours. Just yeah. don't do it. <laughs> and yeah, sure enough, it's just like yeah, I don't. People do it, but just like anything, just like the hiker romance. There's fire romance. <laughs> they got a little bit everywhere. Yeah. But, how do they decide to divvy tasks? Like, do you fill out a test? Are you saying what experience you've got and then just basing it purely off of that? No, nah, that's, uh, they train you in what they need you for. You get like your saw, your Sawyer cert, so class A, you get pump certified, you have your basic fire school, you do a couple other little classes. That's what like the beginning of the season's all about is just getting your certs, your recs, your what you need to get started and then you just start getting in the flow and practice, and then you put it into um, put it into work in June and July when the fires start coming along. Hmm. Is so. it like summer camp where you're all housed in like the same thing, or are you? It was commuting? for us. It was for us. There was I lived in the bunkhouse in town. It slept eight. We only had seven in the house, but I did live with all my coworkers and then two folks on the trail crew. Um, so it was a full house, not very big, but we made it work. What's the work schedule? Uh, for So mine was, I had four tents. I worked Monday through Friday, but uh, um, sometimes we'd work overtime, uh, um, other crews. Wait, f- four tents, so four shifts of 10? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But worked Monday month. through Thursday for 10 hours. Got it. Uh, would sometimes work overtime, uh, especially once fire season started. You're, and then at the end of the season too, there's a lot of um, prescribed burn projects they try to get done, so you're just, kind of like all right let's try to crank out all the hours you possibly can so uh, but it varies it definitely varies from region to region and Uh, position and so like if you're on an engine versus a hand crew and so on so how varies go ahead what are some pet peeves of the job like what are some things that you're like damn john keeps doing this and that's so annoying (laughs) oh man uh (sighs) I guess sometimes, because yeah, you're working, you're working and living with the same five other folks, and so you definitely at times get annoyed with each other a little bit. Um, what were some of the little nags? I guess just like, just like not shutting up, just like everyone just shut up and stop talking for a bit. Like everything's <laughs> it's running. nothing to do with it's, the firefighting. <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with the firefighting. It, I didn't, bo- it didn't bother me too much. Like I said, we're doing a lot of projects. I guess. One thing is you're either, it's like zero to 100. You're either do like working your ass off the whole time or you are just kind of like waiting for things to do mm. kind of thing. So, um, which I would just get antsy and I have so much like ADHD. I'm like, okay, I want to like do something and I'm walking around and people are just like, just chill out. We'll find something to do <laughs> eventually. <Yeah. laughs> like we'll be told to go somewhere and do something like enjoy your rest. So, so. they gave you the chainsaw to tire you out. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I mean, the chainsaw did tire me out. It was, it was good. I liked it a lot. Would you do another season? I hope to. Yeah. yeah, I applied. Actually, I applied to places mainly in Colorado this year. Ooh. I wanted to spend a summer in Colorado, maybe bag some 14ers on my day off. So waiting to hear back from them. Uh, but I can always, I have open arms back in Driggs, which I do love. Oh, my gosh. Such a beautiful area. Hmm. Huge fan. So we'll, it, we'll see where life takes me. Is it easier to get hired now that you've got the experience? Um. Definitely helps. I mean, they are always hiring. It just depends on location and position, but yeah. they're always looking for, for people to hire. Yeah. 
And with the previous interviews we've done, it seems like there's a pretty high burnout rate with this, no pun intended. Yeah. No. It, <laughs> have you witnessed that as well? It definitely, 100%. <clears throat> I mean, you're out there, especially when you're on uh, a fire, you're out there for at least two weeks straight, working 16 hours. Um, and it can be exhausting. Um, and especially at the end of the season for us with our prescribed, we were just doing, I think I worked like 14 days straight or like 15 days straight, 12 plus hour shifts cutting all day and it just I don't know it kind of humbles you a little bit for sure um I've been very appreciative of my district for allowing me to take time off even if I didn't have um overtime saved up like before I even started I had intentions to go to trail days out in Damascus so I told them back in February when I got hired I was like hey I'm gonna be gone after 10 days of working with you, I'll be gone for four days. Like, I got a thing going on. And uh, they're like, okay, cool. Like, well, noted, no problem. While I've talked to my other friends that worked in different districts and regions, and they were like, absolutely not. Like, we, our bosses would never let us do something like that mm -hmm. unless we had the appropriate pay time off. So I know they're trying to change that just because of – even though it's a seasonal job, it's still a very high intense, stressful job and everyone handles it differently. So it's nice that they are trying to accommodate for um, the the mental and physical um, uh, stress it does put on the body, mind and, and soul. So, uh, so I definitely was able to take, I got to go on my friend's like famous 4th of July backpacking trip. We went out to the Big Horns Wilderness out in, uh, or National Forest out in Wyoming. So I could do that for the 4th of July for like a three day, three, four day little backpacking trip and was able to take, you know, like I said, a three day weekends oh, half the year. So half the summer. So that was nice to be able to like take off, do my little hiking, backpacking weekend warrior kind of trips, even though it's like, it's just not cutting it completely, but it'll do for yeah. the time being. <clears throat> Is it hard to have the energy for the weekend trips after you've been just crushing it for four days straight? A, a little bit, but I also trained for a 50K um, at the end of the season. So when I was having my long work days, I'd look forward to being done to go run Jeez. 12 miles. <laughs> You're built differently. Or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like looking for it as my like outlet of like, oh my God, I'm so tired yeah. of work. Like I can't wait just to zone out while I'm running. Yeah, like still physically exerting myself, but the mental of like, okay, I just can like relax my brain and just run <laughs> yeah. instead of like paying attention to what I'm cutting and so on and so forth. So, Do you look at trees differently after doing a season like let's say you're hiking when i'm just looking at the forest are you like that tree's gotta go that tree's an, like an issue i definitely admire uh certain like forests as you're like driving you're like oh wow they took really nice care of this or like oh that's like really overgrown over there like you can tell like especially right after i was done i was out in alberta for three weeks um for a fire and I immediately got back and then went out to do a section of Southern Oregon um, with my boyfriend and seeing the difference for us from this marshy area down to Oregon, which has such big trees. And they always have, I mean, the fire started right after I left there. Um, but it was just, it, it's, you just admire it differently for sure. You just look at it in a different way. And I'm always been a person while I'm hiking. I, I'm a big, I touch trees. I love touching trees, even with my, like, my sun gloves. I'm just trying to get a little feel like, oh, thank you. <laughs> if I'm having a good day, I'm like, thank you, trees, for being here. If I'm having a bad day, I'm like, yo, trees, give me a little loving. Like, <laughs> I'm struggling right now. So, or if I'm thinking of other people, like, I hope this person's doing well. And, like, you know, the mycelium and the, they're all connected. So I'm hoping the good vibes go through the, the soil and the trees kind of thing. So, but, yeah, I definitely look at forests a little bit differently when it comes to like mitigating and like ooh, it's a good looking forest look at that base how clean it is down there so. nice trunk yeah <laughs> how is the pay very it, it's a very bittersweet job man you want there to be fires because that's where you get your money mm. um so it's not great but um when there's fires, you're like stoked because you get overtime and hazard and so on. I know what they're working on. There's this article because I follow like the Hot Shot um, podcast and they've they are always talking about, you know, things that are going on with different fire crews and just the basic stuff. And um, 
they're talking about how like for prescribed burns and cutting projects we don't get hazard for that even though sometimes it's even more dangerous or there's more of a hazard being in such close proximity to such hazards as a falling tree and or burning um, even though they're piles like something could still go wrong anything can happen um, I know that they're trying to change that and make it like you get hazard and there's a lot of talk about the pay and time off and so on and so forth I'm still like relatively new and I'm just like ah, it doesn't affect me too too much right now because I'm not full time or or whatever but it's, it's yeah it's not the best but you mentioned the bunk room earlier are they providing room and board because um, when I worked at a summer camp like they do not pay you mm-hmm. that much at all at summer camp but they also have the room and board that they take out for but also your cost of living is way lower because like we would be on the mountain with a day off every 14 days and apart from that day off like i don't have internet you know like i'm not scrolling through j crew trying to find something to shop for (laughs) um is the cost of living a lot lower or is it you know comparable to other jobs i feel like it varies depending on where you get hired and where what region you're at what division what your yeah what your situation is like like for me housing is was available for first year folks but it's not promised and then even if you come back a second year third year whatever you're not guaranteed housing and it it just it definitely just varies from region to region because some bunk houses are larger than others the one are we have eight person there's another one my friend was at that could you could have like 20 people in their bunk house and so it definitely i've noticed it varies Mm -hmm. depending on where you go so um, yeah i was very fortunate to have some pretty cheap cheap living um because i've just been living in my car when i haven't been hiking for the last three four years so this is like my first time paying rent since college (laughs) i stayed in my old hiker hiker partners um dad had an extra house up in new hampshire in the summer of 2020 so like i stayed in a house then but like to actually pay for rent even though it was dirt cheap i was like oh god this is so weird i got my own (laughs) space after I shower not at the gym or the random REI I work at like so it was it was it was nice to have my own little space especially after long days of just cutting and whatnot and you're like okay I'm just gonna lay here (laughs) instead of just being kind of crammed in my Ford Escape so but that was nice yeah in those regards Let's talk backpacking. Yeah, let's talk about my favorite thing to do in the <laughs> world, uh, which is backpacking. Um, so if my notes are correct, you began backpacking in 2019. Yep. You've yep. piled in a lot of miles in four years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I know that you see hiking as more of a lifestyle as opposed to just like a hobby. Mm-hmm. At what point did it become that? I'm assuming your first backpacking trip wasn't like, I'm, I guess this is my lifestyle. Like I, there was probably an evolution to that. Yeah. Plan. So um, never did much backpacking uh, growing up at all. I mean, I was a Girl Scout, but we always like stayed in cabins and I just never did the, the camping in a tent thing. So graduated college. My best friend and I took a road trip um, from Chicago to Glacier and that just like changed my life i you know did i slept did like car camping for the first time set up a nice big bonfire set up the tent i'm being like a little child at the age of whatever 22 like oh my god this is so fun Hmm. um and then i moved back to my parents house after college and just like hated my life (laughs) for a little bit i don't know what i was doing and when i was thinking about what was the last thing i did that was like fun made me happy and it was being in glacier and i was like oh my gosh what can i do about this and i just googled like long distance hikes west coast and then that's when the pct popped up and i was like nothing else matters i'm going west like (laughs) i'm getting a one-way ticket and getting the hell out of here as soon as possible so uh yeah i just saved up for a year and then got a one-way ticket in february of 2019 mind you um to san diego to go hike northbound which was a very high snow year it was very foolish to start that early but uh Anything to get out of the Midwest in the winter time. I was like, let's just get this adventure started. Where are you from originally? Chicago. Like Chicago, Chicago? The suburbs, like Southwest suburbs. I'm like okay. a half hour outside of the city. Okay. But Do we have this conversation on Friday? I don't think so, no. Okay. We started I'm, going off about other stuff. Yeah. I'm from the burbs as well, but Northwest suburbs. So. I saw, I was going to say 815. I was like, yeah. yo, man, that's that's tight. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't yeah, seen yeah. that in a minute. Cubs or socks? <laughs> Cubs. Okay, good. Cubs we, for right. all the good. way. You can that stay. Was a, wait, that was another funny thing. Um, I did end up one of the, I pulled into the bunkhouse and there's another Illinois license plate and I was like, oh, 
tight. Like, let's go. I walk in. And I was like, where are you from? He's like, Vernon Hills. I'm like, oh, so you're a, you're a Cubs fan being up north. No, I'm a Sox fan. I just liked him. And I was like, well, you suck. And then just like <laughs> left to go in my car to grab more stuff. And I was like, he probably thinks I'm an ass. Like, <laughs> definitely had like weird vibes until the last like month of working with him. But yeah, I had my big W flag hanging in the bunkhouse. Like... Huge, huge Cubs fan. Yeah, love huge that. Cubs fan. Love that. But okay, so you buy a one-way ticket to the PCT in February. Yeah. Did you know what you were signing up for in regards to the high snow? Man, no idea. No idea. I almost died so many times in Santo and um, Baden Powell, and oh my goodness, it was the. I ended up mailing my stuff. I was very gun ho. I was like, I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna go through. It's gonna be fine, and then after almost like falling off and uh, it was very stressful I, I had no idea what i was doing and i got to kenny meadows and the the trail fam that i met he was planning on uh, working in kern in kernville in southern uh, california for a couple months and then was going to continue in july northbound so he already knew he was going to stop so he offered he was like yo i could probably get you a job or something and you can just take some time off i ended up just working at kennedy meadows dabbling around in a truck and a camper until I decided to flip up and southbound went on a whole side trip from from the hiking thing which I like you know no regrets but at the same time it definitely set me up to if I start a trail I'm never not going to finish it again because I'm yet to finish the PCT I still only have half of it done and you hate California uh, and I really do not like California <laughs> so the combination makes it very difficult to uh to, to get back out there and do it, especially because I definitely have found such a love for routes and uh, just being completely isolated from the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that about hiking is just putting myself out in the elements and raw dog life. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what? what a quote. Yeah. Like what is going to happen next? I don't know. Like there could be water here. There could not be water. Like but let's find out. Yeah. So the, the more uncomfortable it is, the more, yeah, the type two fun of, I don't know what's going to happen next. Let's go. So. So it sounds like with that kind of mindset, like I understand how you could have found yourself in a couple of precarious positions along the PCT. Um, before we move too far past that hike, you mentioned San Jacinto and Baden Powell where sketchy stuff happened. Oh yeah. I mean, I ended up hanging out in Idlewild for two weeks or something because we wanted to be able to summit Jacinto and San Jack John was like you need at least four days to like get up get up to the top and then get down Fuller Ridge and it took us two weeks to get that window so we'd hike because we ended up like hitching in early from Paradise Cafe because we were like waist deep and then we ordered snowshoes went back did a small section like went back to town for a day would do another like overnight section. So we we're like slowly clearing it out until we got the weather window to go up and over and down Jacinto. And going down Jacinto is actually where I ended up causing a small avalanche, fell like 800 feet off the trail. My phone died and had no idea what I was doing. Were so you I was, with anyone? No, my family, like the trail fam, the three folks in front of me were like, they were ahead of me. I was the caboose. So uh, they ended up, because like I said, my phone is like on 10%, almost dead. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, it wasn't working. Like it's, it just was 10% all day. So I'm like, I don't know when this thing's going to die or not. Yeah. I knew like you curved around. So I was like, I'm just going to keep going straight until I find the trail again. Came across a random cabin that I slept in that night. Got up, found the trail in the morning, found where they, where they camped because they left the big six with an arrow for like sixes he camped over there and then by the time like i said i'm 24 hours in my phone is still on 10 percent. i ended up getting service going down fuller ridge uh just got out of some snow finally got some ground had a wee bit of service and called them i was like guys i am seven or ten miles from cabazon they're like tight we just got to the road we'll wait for you at the starbucks and then like my phone died so they knew i was alive we had a meetup spot and i was like oh my god trail gods thank you so much like stressful you know stressful 24 hours but got through it and that's when i was like okay even with the gear because you know i bought crampons i bought snowshoes i had my ice axe like you have all these things and but i didn't practice much with them like just watch a couple of YouTube videos. Like we did go out a couple times to to learn how to use some of the gear, but just 
yeah, I had no idea. Practice makes perfect, and we did not have any practice there. Yeah. So it freaked me out. And uh, after that, we definitely all kind of tried to stay a little bit closer together. So, How badly did you get beat up on that fall? I, surprisingly, it wasn't bad. Uh, I just ended – because I remember I had my – I switched off from snowshoes to my crampons to snowshoes again, not sure which would be better for this little traverse. And I had the snowshoes on, and that's just – I was cheap and wanted to save an extra like 50 bucks to from getting um ms msr's uh um evas and instead of paying an extra like 50 bucks to get the like 210 pound limit i was like oh 180 pounds like that's perfect i was not 180 <laughs> pounds with my pack on folks like i was definitely like starting off you're like i'm gonna go in chunky you know you're gonna lose all this weight so i was maybe 180 pounds without the pack which my base weight was 25 when i started that trail so the snowshoes became very useless in the sense of like i just kept falling when i was traversing stuff uh -huh. so i just ended up slipping causing this huge slide and was just like dodging trees until it finally just like stopped and i just looked back up like i'm not going up that like I, pff, this way <laughs> i know it's that way and we'll give it the best shot so what happens if you're over the weight for the snowshoes are they just like going into the ground pushing of... yeah yeah you just sink into the snow mm -hmm. much quicker and yeah they become really useless <laughs> silly me <laughs> Buy, buy the right kind of gear. Don't be don't be cheap. It's not worth it. So. So is your disdain for California related to the difficult snow conditions? Oh my gosh, I mean, definitely as a part of it. Being in Kennedy Meadows, I, I worked there for like six weeks, which was like fun, but also you're just a part of the the grumpy bear and Kennedy Meadows general store drama because they're families, and you're just like, oh my god, I hate the taste. I end up buying a truck. Wait, give us the drama. I don't know. Yeah, the what's, what's the oh, there's drama? Just dra I don't even remember, honestly. I uh, just know, like, they're they're related or something. Like, oh, there's just, like, family drama. And they yeah. just are, like, they're, they're – but at the end of the day, they both, like, kind of care about hikers, but, like, not really. <laughs> it's not like you have <laughs> options. Like, you're about to go in the Sierra. you got to post up somewhere for a couple days and get your gear and life situated before you go in. So yeah. I can't. You know, I'm not going to talk shit about them too much. But, yeah, there's definitely some, like, goofy drama that you're just like, oh, my God, I cannot stand this. Like, I just want to help hikers and, like, carry on until the snow melts. So, Well, not even, like, family drama behind business, but working at Kennedy Meadows for six weeks in a high snow year, I imagine you're getting a lot of the hiker drama where you're watching meltdown after meltdown after stay or yeah. go, flip or stay, you know. So, yeah, there was uh, – I ended up leaving there, like – what is that like may 29th or 30th or something and a lot of folks ended up coming in that first week of june i've met so many people like from 19 that are like oh yeah i was there on june 2nd and i'm like i just missed you but prior to that like month of may there was not a lot of people like specific ones i remember was like skittle came through like may 14th or something and seeing people live with leave with 17 days of food on their back i was like <laughs> You know, I wanted to be out there so badly. I called my mom crying, like, send me back my stuff. I'm going in. I met this this badass chick, Jeannie. Like, we're going to go in the Sierra. And my mom's like, I'm not sending you your gear. Like, you're going to die if you go in the Sierra right now. Wait, what? why wasn't your gear with you? I mailed it back home. I, I decided to get rid of it. Where was it? I forget what town. Right after Wood. Wood what is it? Wood, Wood right? Right Wood? Right Wood. Right Wood. Right wood. Um, I think it was after Wrightwood because we ended up like doing because that was another place like strawberry something. I remember there was like a little thing I fell down and almost like fell over an edge and I just started crying. I was like, I am going to die. <laughs> like This is ridiculous. But uh, yeah, I ended up just sending my uh, stuff home because there wasn't like too, too much snow the last, I don't know, last couple hundred miles of Southern. Oh, so you didn't send, like, your whole backpack home. No, not I thought the whole you were thing. doing, no, like, self-preservation mm -mm. to keep yourself off trail. No, just, <laughs> take just my the sleeping winter bag, gear. Take my yeah, backpack. Yeah, no, just, just the winter gear. Just Got the winter it. gear to Got encourage it. me not to go into the snow. But, yeah, like I said, like, three days after, or, like, it was the day after I got there, I met this chick who was planning on going in, and, and I was like, Mom, I'm, I, I'm doing this. You have to send me my stuff back. Like, I've met this chick. We're going to do it. It's going to be awesome. And she's like, absolutely not. You're going. <laughs> and uh, what's her name? Yogi was just setting up stuff for her the first time at Grumpy Bears. So I was like inquiring. I was like, I'm not dropping $800 on more gear. <laughs> like, because my mom doesn't want to send it to me. I guess I'll just hang out here for a couple weeks. So. <clears throat> 
But yeah, that was PCT was wild. It was a doozy, and it definitely set me up to be the hiker that I am today. But looking back at it, I'm like, wow, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Good grief. So you've done half the trail, but you didn't do all of the half in 2019. Yeah. Right? Some nope. of those miles came last year. Yeah, just 100. So, okay. yeah, I did, um, I guess, technically, what is it, like uh, 1,444 miles or, or something like that I've at, I'm at now. But I did, yeah, SoCal and then Washington. So 70, 703 plus 504, yeah. 1307. That's what I did in 19. <laughs> So. And uh, sorry if I distracted from the question about why you hate California. You mentioned oh. working at uh, Kennedy oh, Meadows. Man, it's so expensive. I got so I ended up buying a truck. So one of the locals, there's only like 30 people that live in Kennedy Meadows, and one of the family, one of the couples up there was getting rid of a 33 foot trailer. And the guy was seen there. They're like, "We'll give this trailer to you for free. You just need a truck." And so I was like, "Oh my god, I guess I'll like go get a truck." <laughs> and so I went to Ridgecrest and like Lan Lancaster. And I ended up buying this truck. I don't know how these people sold me a truck. I don't have money. I'm hiking this trail. <laughs> like, I have no money. But I somehow walked out of there with this 3,500 Dodge Ram truck with, like, 49,000 miles for nothing. And uh, But the interest. Seems like a really good in, deal. It was great, but the interest was over 18%. Oh. So I was basically paying for rent every month with this truck. <laughs> so that... Miss Marvel, RIP, she has now been sold to someone in Wisconsin, but she lasted me a whole eight months or eight or nine months before I was like, I can't afford this vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is wild. What was I thinking as and a silly 24 year old? And you had a 33 foot trailer? So that ended up caving through. That's <laughs> so the whole reason <laughs> you got the truck. Yes. <laughs> this is the clusterfuck of it all. <laughs> like, we ended up not doing it and then finding a camper up in like, um, Seattle, outside Seattle, we just got a, a truck camper to put on the back and was living living out of that for a couple months. But yeah, what a trip! What a trip! What a comical <laughs> trip in my life that I'm like, I feel like it was a dream, but it happened. So, yeah. so take us from the clusterfuck that was the PCT to your first successful hike. Yeah, so uh, was living in my bless my mother. This woman is the real MVP of the story. She drove my Ford Escape that I have had since I got it and then drove to my that glacier trip out in 17. So I put 5,000 miles on it the day after I got this car <laughs> to begin with. But she drove from Chicago to Phoenix with that Ford Escape and then picked up that truck and ended up selling it for me back in the Chicagoland area. Go mom. Shout out, man. She is not a young buck either. Like, <laughs> she is not as young, but she is kicking it so hard. Love it. Um, but yeah, she uh, was living in my car in Tucson, working as a medical assistant at this dermatology office, and uh, work just being a weekend warrior. And the pandemic happened. <laughs> the pandemic happened. And on a Wednesday, they were like, yeah, we might not need you tomorrow. I got a call, like, okay, we don't need you to come in anymore. And then Friday, they're like, okay, like, you're done and i was like okay great i'm gonna go <laughs> hop on the arizona trail so i took a day to resupply grab some food i asked my friend that i worked with if i can leave my car there for a month while i go hike this and she was like absolutely hitched down to start her off and on like two days later or a day and a half later march 21st of 2020 i'm hiking northbound on the arizona trail so I, that's what started it all off and that, yeah that was pretty fortuitous timing because that was one of the few trails where the uh, organization didn't they actively didn't, close it down yeah they were okay with it and there was a decent amount of people on trail because i actually trail magic to my one friend henry this older gentleman from british columbia that i met on the pct he ended up being or doing the arizona trail and made it i trail magic him uh in obviously Tucson and then I think he made it just a little bit further north to Kearney which I don't know like I think that's like just south of Superior so it was like 250 miles 300 miles in or something like that and then that's when the pandemic happened and he was like oh, crap going back to BC and because uh, I was like oh I'll try to catch up to you Henry you know he had like two and a half weeks ahead of me or three weeks ahead of me and I'm like I'll just try to chase him down but he ended up getting off a decent amount of people um, just started getting off because I, I saw like people were starting the Arizona Trail and at that time I was planning on doing the Colorado Trail in 2020 in like June which is early but I wanted to do that so I can do the PNT 
in like July <laughs> and then wanted to do the Arizona Trail in the fall of 2020. That was my original plan. Yeah. But then since the pandemic happened, I was like, I guess I'll just hop on the trail and go from there. And uh, yeah, so. That is such an ambitious agenda for someone who had just run into so much shit on the previous exactly because i was like this is not how it's meant to be yeah like i knew i was supposed to be out there doing this thing and i just happened to come across some bad juju and i was shaking that juju off and starting fresh and wanted to take a bite out of just take I'm, i definitely bite more than i chew kind of thing like i'm like oh god can i handle all this and i was like you know what what's the worst case like i just end up not like doing something the last thing because i run out of money but i was budgeting like i just i just bought um all the trails on gut hook too like i remember there's like 30 percent off so i was like all right i'm pulling the trigger let's do this colorado <laughs> trail like pnt arizona trail done on gut hook and uh started just like researching because that's it's fun to me it's seeing okay i've got 87 miles between this town and this town it's going to take me three and a half days here's this much food boom next town boom and like you know i love doing that i love planning for a trip so uh it definitely kept me focused and kept me working and kept me motivated and then once again, yeah, pandemic happened. Yeah. So I just ended up hopping on the trail. It cracked me up, though, because the Grand Canyon closed. Mm. When I Right when I got over Lemon and got to um, Ocala on the other side, uh, they were, it was it like March 28th, they're like, Grand Canyon closed. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> like, every trail I try to start, it's never going to let me finish it. So we ended up just making it to um, just south of Flagstaff and then got off. And then that's when I ended up being in New England for the summer and finished my first actual through hike, which was the long trail. And after finishing that, I was in tears. I was like, I, I can do this. I can do anything. It's possible. Like, cause the getting off the AZT just, just discouraged me. Like, God damn it. I didn't want to like start something and not finish it. And so yeah, doing those hard 273, man, really put me in my place. And I was like, okay, I got this. I was going to ask, because I haven't done the Arizona Trail, so this is speculation, but what appears to be you coming from two desert trails, like the desert portion of the PCT and the Arizona Trail, to go to like the rocks and the mud and the roots and all that of Vermont, how is that adjusting and that like juxtaposition of trail types kicked for my you? ass. <laughs> oh, it kicked my ass. Oh, my, my hiking partner, because I met him on the Arizona Trail, like day four or something, Dosu, and he's from New England. And oh, I our know Dosu. He, Dosu. Was a, he was a trail correspondent. Yeah. 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 Dosu Kenyuta. So he was, uh, he, wasn't he on Naked and Afraid? Yes. He's currently doing another episode or no something shit. along the lines, his fourth one. Wow. So we'll have to get him on the podcast. Yeah. yeah he's a wild one. That's for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we went out to uh, New England for that for the summer of 2020. And the first thing he wanted to do was like, let me take you on my favorite hike. Franconia Ridge. <laughs> I thought that was going to be the long trail. That would be funny. <laughs> so, and I'm over here being like, I don't need no damn poles. Like, I'll be just fine. And we packed out, I want to say in my, because I, I went up that hike in my 40 liter Zerk um, pack. And I want to say. This is 2020? This is 2020. You were one of the first users. Then. I was one of the first. We shout out to Akuna, actually. Uh, Cause yeah, the Viking hiking Viking gave him a couple things and he was like, I ah, doesn't really like how it fits on me very well. And, and I ended up during our road trip from Arizona, we stopped in Louisiana, met up with the Kuna and he was like, yeah, like you want to try this pack out? And I was like, absolutely. Sweet. The, yeah, the hyperlight was giving me some really bad chafing on my lower back. So I was like, I'd love a frameless 40 liter. This will be great. So huh. I started rocking that. And we packed out, I want to say at least 12 twisted tees, <laughs> no micro spikes in May 9th uh, in, in the whites. And it's only like a, it's not even, it's under nine mile loop just to go like up and around and then down. And I, I almost died. Because <laughs> you brought 12 twisted tees on a nine mile loop. <laughs> like, I almost freaking died. Dose was like, this is fine. And he's like, just, he's like, admit the East is hard. Admit the East is hard. And I was like, okay, man, like, it's fine. Like, this is hard. I, you win. You win. This is what you want. He was hazing you. Oh, haze. We hiked together for a year and a half, 5,300 miles. That man hazed me for a lot of it. But it was all good fun. What so. are the best good funs you've had? So we played the game of Palace and we'd hike out a lot of beers and we would usually, we'd play, so like the loser had to do the gauntlet 
So you've mentioned Palace twice. I don't know what this I is, and I it's, love a drinking it's, game. It's a it's a mindless How do you play? game. You just the goal is to get rid of your cards. You you just you start with three cards. You have three cards down, three cards faced up, and you're just getting rid. There's a pile, and you're just getting rid of your cards. And uh, once the cards are done, you go to the cards that are here. You flip them over, and that's kind of the exciting part because they're face down, and you don't know what it's going to be. I can teach you in literally like five minutes. It's a very very fun, mindless game that I love. Honestly, I love it just as much as hiking. So <laughs> it is such a fun game because it just takes up time. Like we played it a lot on the PCT because uh, I learned it from my friend Sixes. There's a, a variation of names for this game. I can't remember what the other ones are, but I've explained it to so many people over the years. And they're like, oh, that reminds me of this game or something very similar. But uh, yeah, the object is to get rid of your cards. So... And it's, is it's it a fun itself one. a drinking game, or do you just turn it into? We a turned it into a drinking okay. game. Yes, Dosu and I tur- were, were mad alcoholics on the trail <laughs> when we hiked, so uh, we turned everything into a drinking game if possible. <laughs> so, what else were hazing experiences? I want to say that was probably. I mean, I guess we also like did a two point oh version of like chalice where instead of having oh, I well, thank you. Of course. Instead of having beer, if we had wine, we had. Where the hell did we get this? Once again, Arizona Trail. <laughs> Freaking blur. <laughs> Freaking blur, I'm telling you. <laughs> Drink some. There is a picture of me with, because if you lost and you had to do the gauntlet, which is adult hopscotch, you're just setting, the winner sets up the cans and you have to crush them to your song of choice. So you need that many cans to crush. There is, so in, over the summer, I probably, I lost the game of Palace and I probably crushed over 200 cans. That's spelled by <laughs> shotgun when I was leaving New Hampshire for the season. So I you kept these cans we ready saved, to... Cause we saved them over the summer when we were living in a house. And when I finished the long trail, Dosu bagged them all up and filled my Ford Escape with these cans. <laughs> over, oh my God. over two, three hundred smelly cans of tw- mainly twisted tea. I'm telling you, mainly tea teas. Because I <laughs> lost, I lost a bet on our road trip to New Hampshire that involved me having to buy twisted teas all summer. I had <laughs> That's to keep, a bad one. To it lose. was. T- $2,500. Yes. <laughs> it was a $2,500 loss there, Jesus. man. That's, what what I don't, was the bet? Unf- it wasn't even Palace. It was actually, um, I want, it wasn't beer pong either. It was just, reg- I think it was beer pong, actually. I remember we were in Virginia. <laughs> Those were high you stakes. summer of Twisted Teas on Dude. a beer pong game? <laughs> yeah. We got to bet with her. Yeah. Dude, no, that's just a terrible, she, terrible to bet with. She'd be scary during odds. I'm like looking at her shoes. I'm like, what can I get you to do a shoey for? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> My yeah. shoes are brand new, so this is a bet I'm willing to make. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have no traction in these, uh, in these boots right now. <laughs> these things are old. <laughs> but, yeah, I... So dumb. I was not sober when I made this bet, and I was feeling so good. I won the last like three games in a row or something. So I was like, "Man, fuck this guy! I'm gonna, get, <laughs> I'm gonna win this bet." And I lost. I lost, and it yeah, it cost me. I did the math, and I was like, "I'm never betting again. <laughs> like I am not betting money or anything this dumb ever again." So, so that was I, uh, yeah, that was the only hazing. So oh, as I was saying, like if you lost and you had to carry out the cans, so there was times I was carrying out like twelve cans or more of beer and my pack was so st- my hyperlight was so stuffed with stuff i have dental floss that i carry with me for both patching and my teeth so i just dangled the beer cans on the back side of my hyperlight and it's just like ting ting you know like empty cans just going as you're walking <laughs> super annoying super annoying but like super funny <laughs> how long did it take to clean out your car with 300 empty cans inside oh man yeah luckily i have it weather tech in the back seat. So, it, so I just. What took, an ad. Yeah, no, so I just took that out and kind of sprayed it down. But because he ended up picking me up, but I, and I saved myself to only have 13 miles that last day. But I took my sweet ass time <laughs> doing those last 13 miles. You know, I was like, I'll get, I'll get done by one. We'll celebrate. And then we'll like go to the store and turn in all those cans in Vermont and get some money back, yeah. whatever. I ended up not getting done until the sun was setting so it was like beautiful like finishing pics but it's like oh shit you have to like hike out like a mile or something to the parking lot and then from there we were outside of concord we were in canterbury new hampshire so that was like an hour and a half two hour drive or something to get back 
And so it was like dark. Walmart was going to be closed by the time we got there. So we drove all the way up there with those fucking empty beer cans and garbage <laughs> bags and ended up driving with them right back. And which is why just before I left, um, cause I went from New Hampshire back to Chicago for a week. And then we met back up in uh, Arizona to finish the Arizona trail. And before I left, that's when he set up all those cans to spell by shotgun and I crushed them. <laughs> and I have to say my hips were very strong. I had very strong <laughs> hips during that time, just crushing with individual feet. So. Have you seen those videos where they line up the cans and the person's like, like going like that with one foot and oh, they just yes. go straight down the line. I yeah. don't know how to explain this in words. Yes, no, I know exactly what you're talking <laughs> about because that's like similar to, I just saw something very similar the other day on like Instagram. And I was like, oh, that's like kind of like the gauntlet, but we do it that you have to keep your foot up. Like if you're crushing with your right foot, you got to keep crushing with your right foot. You can't switch. We're such assholes. <laughs> <laughs> We're such assholes. We love burying people in the dirt. I look back and I'm like, oh my God. Like, You've buried someone in the dirt on a trail? Not like actually, but like just got them so fucked up. Like on uh, the Florida Trail too. We had a couple people southbound. We were on the Florida Trail that we taught them the game at um, 88, the store 88 or whatever. And um, yeah, we just like. I remember we buried this kid wonky in the dirt. Like, just we just got him so drunk. I'm thinking <laughs> literally, just... like you're going to a beach and you're making a merman person, but like on a trail in the dirt. And I that's thought... see on the Hey Duke, we had I buried my food in six different places, and it's exhausting to bury <laughs> to bury to dig deep holes. So I admire people that do that at the beach. Yeah, <laughs> like that shit is hard and takes a lot of time and patience, and I don't have that. So. But yeah, yeah, not actually burying, just burying mentally with alcohol poisoning. <laughs> so it sounds like you're a pretty strong drinker. What's like your average consumption over a night? If you're going out. It's like a doctor's out, office I, question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it kind of cracks me up. I have turned into a real baby recently. I get hangovers. How old are you? I, I'm 28. I'll be 29 okay. it gets in worse. less than a month. It, yeah, yeah, wait till you cross the 30 bridge. Exactly. I'm like, it's really unfortunate. It's just wild how it was like 27. Like, I'd just be on trail and, like, yeah, we'd be drinking as much. And, like, all of a sudden I woke up and I was like, I am hungover. <laughs> like, I feel horrible <laughs> right now. This is not cool. And before, I never used to have any issues. So, I recently, my uh, alcohol consumption in the last year has dipped probably 80% from what I used to drink. Uh, this is probably the most I've drank in a while, to be honest, which is kind of funny. Uh, big pothead. Big <laughs> pothead, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I, I've just really simmered it down on the poison for the liver and get the lungs. So, <laughs> Got to make sure there's balance. Yeah, I got to find the balance in life. So, Speaking of pothead, does it smell like something's burning right now? Cookies? A little bit. Yeah. Before it was like the smell of Chinese food. Now it smells like something's burning. So not as bad as the other. Well, when they were wallpapering, there was one moment when we were all sitting in the other room, like something is on fire. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if, if there's a serious fire, at least we got a firefighter. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Should we be concerned? I guess let's ask you, our resident firefighter. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't see any smoke yet. So yeah. it smells, right. like, it smells like candle smoke. I was gonna say my candles. nose is a little stuffy. Yeah. So it I'm does smell like help. candles though, and I wasn't sure if it was even like cookies, but candles. Yeah, like are... someone blew out birthday candles birthday candles yes yeah yeah all right well happy birthday if the, if the podcast ends abruptly <laughs> it may you be know why <laughs> <laughs> at least i got one good episode out of the wallpaper yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. our forest fire right here yeah. um <clears throat> yeah no goody i remember from chatting on friday that you did the long trail quickly i, I guess yeah quickly ish i mean 13 days that's fast because I, I was killing myself and i did it in 15 i couldn't imagine shaving two days off of that yeah it was rough i definitely went in there thinking i was going to do it in 10 days being just hiking from out west yeah. to immediately and then getting my ass kicked by uh not i mean the, the shoes that i wore i was still wearing ultras so the two shoes that I had both had about four to 500 miles on them to begin with. So I was like, okay, I'll wear one pair of old shoes for the first week. When Dosu picks me up in um, Middlebury, which was halfway, I just like slept over, ate a bunch of food, put on the other pair of shoes that had like 450 miles to finish off. Both of those shoes just completely deteriorated. I mean, they only got 125 miles on them, but completely deteriorated. Um, I ended up breaking the Garmin watch. I was wearing because I slipped and then fell right on it. 
my legs got bruised and bumped up like nobody's business um my goal was to sleep in as many fire towers as possible so i remember the first like couple of days there was one like 24 miles in and then like you had to do another like 25 or something so i was like trying to motivate myself but boy oh, it was not, not not easy man i uh, i would love to do it again and slow her down a little bit but i just yeah and it was dry when i was out there as well i started which is June. Nice. yeah it was it was weird because i was like oh there's gonna be so much water i'm not gonna carry more than a liter at a time but then there came a point where it was so hot and i was it was so humid i'm really not i don't like humidity i definitely realize like i grew up with it whatever but after going out west and just being there for the the year that i was out there and then going back out i was like oh my god this is terrible this is horrible awful no good and just sweat i'm a very sweaty person so i just just sweat so much more water out and it was dry so i there was supposed to be water in certain places i'm like shoot there's no water so i was like struggling a little bit at times but yeah it was it was hard it was hard but i definitely made the most of it there was a de it wasn't as crowded just because um covid was still kind of going on so a lot of the people i met were section hiking some folks were doing the whole at until i got to the junction and then i did meet I want to say at least 10 folks doing the long trail while I was on it 10 to like 12 people or something but yeah it was much because I was of course I'm like oh god it's gonna be so crowded but it was nice to have it not crowded for sure having done it so much faster than Zach he's not here to defend himself but so yeah. much faster than Zach <laughs> what kind of hiking schedule do you keep because I've found the more hikes I do whether the mileage differs based on like the trail, the train, whatever, I typically keep the same structured day. I leave camp at the same time. Mm -hmm. I have my snackies. I plan for lunch around water. You know, like I have my little routine I do despite the trail. Yeah. What's your routine from like a sun up to a sundown? Yeah. So definitely love getting up early and getting those couple miles in early What's on. Early? early sunrise so in the summertime june sun was getting up there by probably like 5 30 yeah. or something so and i was hammocking as well so um which is another funny thing is my hammock ended up breaking uh right after i dosu dropped me off so he dropped me off i'm not sober i go hike like <laughs> half a mile up and then i see a great view and i was like i'm gonna sit here i'm gonna eat this bag of doritos and just take in the view and be drunk <laughs> and and I set up my hammock and I sit down and I go right through my hammock and that I've and I've had this for what like three or four years now. I spent a lot of a lot of time in this hammock and I am just crushed. <laughs> so I ended up just uh, the last half of the trail just ended up shelter banging because my poor hammock broke and of course it rained that last half of it. So I'm like, oh my god, I got to make it to these shelters and make sure there is room. But um, was it ever a close call? It was a little questionable. I, I did get to a shelter late one day because um, they're so when back to your question with the routine, I am very I like schedule, but at the same time, I'm OK with doing whatever feels right. I don't like forcing myself like there'd be times I'd wake up at five, be out of camp by 530 and then hike an hour. And then I'm just like, I can't keep my eyes open. So what do I do? I literally right off the trail, just lay down and sleep for 40 minutes or something and then dirt wait. naps are the just best dirt. nothing you I don't sleep as well as a dirt nap <laughs> ever <laughs> i love a good dirt nap and i learned to nap in college like 15 minute 20 minute naps like i refuel on those so i just dirt naps it like make myself feel better and continue on so i did a lot of that on the long trail even in, like the afternoons when you're just like there is nowhere to lay down but i had a hammock at the time so i just be i just set up my hammock on a random spot on the side of the trail at three o'clock in the afternoon and sleep for whatever and then continue on so there were some nights i would get in early some nights i'd get in late and one of the close calls it was raining and there was a hut that fit nine and there were eight in there and i got in late and i was like oh god like hey can you guys like squeeze me in or something and like luckily this giant group like made room for me which was so nice because i would have been absolutely screwed and probably just hiked all night um but that was probably the only real close call when it came to 
there was just it was just rained the last like three days three four days so and of course i got rid of my rain gear so when i, I stopped in a store and just grabbed a garbage bag and was just wearing a garbage bag <laughs> i rain gear man i don't spend money on rain gear i haven't I, invested in it those emergency ponchos you can get that are like super cheap like amazon walmart yeah. gas station on the Ten side bucks, of the road man. Those things freaking rock. Those yeah. things and are the best. They last forever. I had mine on the Colorado Trail. I reuse it. It's currently under a bookcase. Like there's that little crack between the bottom of the bookcase and the floor itself. And I didn't know where to store this thing. So I just stuffed it under there. And I was like, I'll always remember this spot. Yeah. Perfect. Um, they last. And like rain jackets soak through. That's the one piece of gear that I'm like, I would rather mm-hmm. spend 10 bucks on you, have a poncho where you just cover everything. I don't got to worry about a like yeah. backpack cover um yeah love a yeah no love at, a cheap rain device like i i've worked at rei currently am part-time right now but clothing department i the amount of folks that have come in just to be like hey i'm going to you know s- you know south america i'm gonna go to peru the rainy season i you know i'm only gonna use this gear once and i've just recommended frog talks yeah yeah to a number amount of people instead of wasting four hundred dollars to get a two hundred dollar rain jacket and two hundred dollar rain pants just spend twenty five dollars, fifty dollars for you and your husband, or even if you want to get two for yourselves in case something rips. That's a hundred bucks. You'd be saving yourself half that money, especially for a short hike. Because yeah. knocking those is the durability. It, it, but, exactly, yeah. the durability of those is. I mean, I I just started using Frog Togs in twenty twenty two, and I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Honestly, like, gotta give them a shout out because that was the big thing to get for the PCT in 2017 when I went. And mm-hmm. when it comes to like high end backpacking gear, like something's in, something's out. Yeah. Right. Like ultras are in, ultras are out, <laughs> hokas are in. Or this is the newest fabric for the tent, you know, all these different things. And frog tucks just keep riding that wave. Like they Dude, keep it's surviving. So basic. It's, it's just because that's just so such a basic thing yeah. that just does it gets the job done it keeps you dry and honestly it kept me really well insulated and i run mm. very cold so i was very impressed with my frog togs it's, it's actually waterproof as opposed to like a lot of these gore-tex jackets that are breathable yeah uh, yeah they, eventually the they went is, out yeah and the problem is too is you have to like recoat them you have to yeah. wash them to recoat them multiple and once times you're and reapplying that stuff it's it's, it gets it's diminishing returns it really it's, yeah. yeah it's never the same like yeah. It's hard when you're like, you know, these people want to know know the truth and you're like, this is the truth, man. Like, it'll kind of, you know, cover it up a little bit, but you're going to just spend the money to feel good about it for a little bit. Yeah. Which is why I'm like frog togs. <laughs> I'd yeah. Screw this shit. Get some frog togs. <laughs> yeah. I definitely want to jump the timeline here a little bit just to make sure that we can get through yeah, these trails. Yeah, please do. Uh, but just quickly, I want to know, because I've heard that the Arizona Trail is an ass kicker. You went straight from the AZT to the Long Trail. How does the AZT compare in terms of difficulty relative to the Long Trail? I mean, uh, so much. I mean, different in so many ways. Um, Arizona Trail definitely had some rocky. Just like the actual trail itself was a bit like. Rock, you're like you're on a road that just had rocks on it and i was wearing once again still ultras at the time very thin so like my the bottom of my feet were hurting in comparison to when i was out there in the fall of 2020 and did flagstaff to utah the last 250 miles in uh um the la sportiva jackals which is what i've been wearing and repping for the last three and a half years mm. um i ended up wearing getting them right after the long trail so i started yeah i'm not wearing them now (laughs) just checking (laughs) i'm wearing boots right now my uh yeah everything else is wet i stepped in a big ass puddle (laughs) wiping off my car it's beautiful living at copper man i don't have to drive anywhere or worry about anything so i still had 10 inches of snow on my car Uh. as i'm like trying to clear it off before coming down so um so my shoes are wet but I, and for having a wide foot too, I was really surprised. The jackals, fantastic, but the, the oh, that's, a, that's surprising because La Sportiva I've always found is a very narrow. narrow, narrow. And I have their Nucleo boots, their hiking boots that I wear in the winter time, even though they're not insulated. But I just like having some type of waterproof boot. And yeah, it's it's comical for having a wide foot that I do, like a two E usually. And that's they what I am fit too. Me. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. I'll have to give something else to try. Yeah. Super funny and interesting. Um, I will say I dislike. The Jackals too, and Dosu is sponsored by La Sportiva. So I was like, "What the hell, man? What they do? What they do to my shoe? Why are they changing this shit?" Every <laughs> but, every shoe company, the next every, model, they always change they shit. Fuck it up. I put it on immediately and was like, "I'm never selling a Jackal ever again." Like <laughs> disappointed. But uh, yeah, completely different. Arizona and Long Trail, just yeah. 
completely different. I mean, dry and hot to hot and humid. And then I would say relatively clear trail on the Arizona Trail. I Mm. mean, I even did 80 miles of it on both the Hey Duke and then the Grand Enchantment Trail. And I mean, still, even in the previous years from doing it in 2020, still nice and cleared out while Vermont, you got roots and mm. rocks and sticks and big middle fingers to trip on yeah. so <laughs> rebar and, yeah yeah the amount of times my hat saved my life from like not ducking enough i should have had like five concussions on that damn trip <laughs> <laughs> the long trail kicked my ass mad respect for the like for out there which is why i'm like will i ever do the at <laughs> will i ever be ballsy enough to do the at well if so. you start from the south you kind of like get that finish fever by the time you get to new england which helps because yeah. I was zooming through the south. You get to New England, it's like 13-mile days of tears. Yeah. Well, that's just it. I mean, doing the White Mountain Deratissima is just bagging the peaks and the whites. And, I mean, that, that, once again, that just humbles you. You're like, damn. Like, I can do this. I felt like I could do anything. I was like, I could do the AT now. (laughs) Like, this is nothing. But, holy shit. Yeah, that wrecked. Once again, just wrecked you in such a fun way that I'm like, I can't wait to do this again. (laughs) (laughs) How many miles do you get out of a pair of these jackals? So I've been ranging about 650 to 1,000. Wow. I ended up damn. getting 1,000, but granted, my big toe was sticking out the last <laughs> couple couple. Yeah, let's couple put it in miles, perspective. How many miles are you getting out of a pair of ultras? I haven't worn ultras since, and I was only getting 250, oh, okay. 300 miles before yeah. they just fell apart on me, which is what pissed me off. I mean, when I was on the PCT in Washington, they fell apart within like 150 miles and then I hollered at them and they were like, oh, okay, we'll send you a new pair. I ended up getting like two new pairs from them because they just fell apart on me. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's the toe box is nice, but which is why I comically actually just switched over to some topos. Uh, just this last what month and a half, I just went from wearing, because I trained all summer in Hoka's for my 50K and then went to Cabo for a week so I cleaned off all of my uh, calluses and then tried to run in my uh, hokas again and realized too narrow too Uh, narrow kind of thing like the calluses were nice but since the calluses are gone just blood blisters so I Mm. switched over to some topos for uh, my friend did a hundred mile run in uh, Canyonlands and I paced him for 24 of it so I just picked these topos up whipped out 24 miles in them wow. and was like okay tight these worked yeah. pretty well so and topos are wide enough for you yeah they, they're very similar to ultras in that way of having the wide toe box they do have a zero drop they do just have more like pump in similar to like hokas yeah so what model do you use of the topos oh god i don't even i think they're the like x explorers or something there's an export maybe i'll try those uh, next i don't even remember no. they only had two options at the the store in lakewood got it which is where I work. So I was like, guys, what do you got in my size? Yeah. <laughs> like, I got to be quick here. <laughs> time is time is in, of the essence. Because I bought this like Friday night and I was running Saturday in Moab. <laughs> so like, I'm telling you, like the turnover was very quickly yeah. from shit. I don't have a pair of shoes <laughs> to help out. <clears throat> okay, let's talk because I gathered from our chat on Friday that this is a trail, if you can call it that, that you feel very passionately about the Hey Duke. Mm. The Dookie Duke. <laughs> I love that. I love it, man. <laughs> what is it about the Hey Duke that you fell in love with? It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. You did the solo? Um, no, I did it with Dosu. Okay. And then my friend Jeannie, the one that I did meet in Kennedy Meadows in 19. So she just finished being a wildland firefighter out in Idaho, flew in to Moab, and joined us after. Because um, we hiked through Arches. And then took two days off October like 3rd and 4th of 2020 while she flew in. And then we cached her food with ours and then started back up again in Moab. Um, what, like the 6th or 7th of October of 2020. But um, so and she did about 150 miles in 2017 after doing the Arizona Trail. But broke her foot hmm. in the middle of nowhere and somehow a van happened to be driving through and picked her up. So it, like absolute miracle. Cause yeah, after being out there, there's, you were in the middle of nowhere. You are in, you are in, but fuck nowhere. Canyons, <laughs> like beautiful, very remote. Like it is, it's my favorite trail because it's just so raw and you are so exposed. And if you mess up, like 
you're fucked. <laughs> and I mean that in like such a, it's a very fun, surreal feeling that, I mean, it's been over three years now that since I've done it, but I'm like chasing to do it again. Mm. Like I haven't felt, I felt almost that exposed on the Grand Enchantment Trail at times um, when I, cause I did that one by myself, but there's something about being in, yeah, like Canyon Lands that was just, yeah, it was it was just the hardest thing I've ever done. Hmm. And after every day, I was like exhausted and just like, what am I doing with myself? But the sheer beauty of it just motivated me to keep going hmm. and keep persevering. So, are there other trails or routes in that vein that would help you chase that dragon, so to speak? I will say the Oregon Desert Trail had some similarities in the sense hmm. of just like mad raw dog and like you. There were definitely times like. Y- you know, Renee had some, she had some like water sources in mind. And then you get to that water source and that tub is full of sand. And you're Did you like, hike it with She-Ra? Uh, no, I hiked it with Dosu. Okay. She picked us up at the end though. Got it. And took us to um, Buffet King or King Buffet in, um, in Bend. Shout out. That was freaking so tight after <laughs> such a long, like last couple of days. Cause the crappy weather was coming in. And I remember we had like a five day, it was going to take us like five days to finish up the last little section of the Oregon Desert Trail it, through the Badlands. And we just, we were doing like 30 plus mile days, like hiking at night, cause it was getting dark by that time at, you know, whatever, it's fall, it's October. So by like five, six, six thirty, it was getting dark. So we'd be hiking until about eight o'clock at night and just wanted to finish up before crappy weather came in. We were, I ended up getting Giardia on the Oregon Desert Trail too. So that one was just a, that was a doozy, but it definitely gave me that sense of like, yeah, the routes, man. The routes are great. You don't have a set blaze you're following. You're following general direction. You're following like this road or this, you're cross country and through this field. And if you were to look at my like, my GPX or actually track, like I am probably doing an extra couple miles because I'm not walking in a straight line. I'm just like zigzagging through the, the sage and whatnot. So it, get, it gives you that same kind of effect, but there's something about, yeah, southern Utah, northern Arizona area that's just absolutely just foreign mm-hmm. and just, I just crave it. Definitely a mountain chick for sure, but my getaways will definitely be desert canyon land areas as such. Hmm. With the Hey Duke, I know there's a good amount of route finding. So far, the trails we've talked about that you've done have not really required any. Where did you pick up the knowledge of route finding and how did you figure that out going into the Hayduke Trail? By not knowing what I was doing. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. And honestly, look, like Dosu and Jeannie both being, you know, triple crowners and have done, they both have, she's done like the Ice Age Trail. She's done some other trails, but not much routes. Neither one of them have done much route finding. So it was new to the three of us. They just had more miles experience than I did. I've just had the long trail half the PCT and then the Arizona Trail. Um, So it was a learning experience for all of us. I will say we did have like Skirka's map. Uh, Comically, all trails um, (laughs) had a really great map that we used. And then um, Jeannie also had uh, Gaia. So we had three different sources of, of maps and resources to figure out where we were going. And which was helpful, you know, it, bittersweet having so many opinions and like the probably the biggest issue we had was just like Dosu and Jeannie wanted to do like things differently. Jeannie wanted just to look at the map and figure it out while Dosu just wanted to like walk. And if, you know, we'll walk in a direction. If it doesn't seem right, then we'll just turn around and walk a different way kind of thing. So, so stressed out. Yeah. So like that <laughs> and, so me, out. and yeah, me being kind of like the least experienced out of the three of us, I was just kind of like. Like, oh, my God, mom and dad are fighting, in a <laughs> sense. Like, I don't know which one to do. So that was the only stressful part. But we were all just like, yeah, we're all trying to just figuring out the route finding thing. And there was a time when we got, like, really off trail and was like an oh, fuck moment of, okay, we need to be over there. It took us two hours to get here, and we have a quarter of water with 30 miles to the next water source. This is not great. Mm. So um, it definitely gives you those oh, shit moments that wake you up. So I've had, like, that was a wake-me-up moment in the heat. I had a wake-me-up moment on the Oregon Desert Trail and the snow and the steens. Um, that dose who ended up getting uh, um, frostbite during it because we were in a blizzard. 
and he didn't have pants and so I had pants but was not hiking as fast as him so he ended up getting frostbite like definitely some oh shit moments that just kind of really put you in your place and realize like oh my god like yeah you've got to keep moving like Hmm. you can't just stop here you got to keep walking and you got to get through this or set up and hope for the best or turn around and and regroup so uh yeah the the hey duke had a lot of oh shit moments and it wasn't until it took 46 days to do and it wasn't until honestly like two weeks in until i was like really enjoying myself in the sense of like oh my god i'm not stressing about miles because we only did 12 miles today and we still have another 46 miles till our next cash and we have a half a day's worth of food like there were definitely some high stressful moments that were and it's not like you can hitch anywhere you are in the middle of nowhere so definitely some high stressful moments that put you in a place of like okay like wake up got to keep moving got to keep doing these things you're pushing yourself mentally and physically in such ways that I've never done as such like I was an athlete I played d1 soccer and like have pushed myself in other ways but there was something about like the life or death portion of it that you're like oh my god like yeah you're really straining yourself to your limits Hmm. and I enjoyed it (laughs) I enjoyed it very much so that when I finished that trail I was like I cannot wait to do this again I cannot wait could not wait like I cannot wait and even like now which is why I'm like would love to get back out there would love to do it in the spring to get that different perspective of it but even if I do it in the fall like I just want to get back out there and hype it up some more because that's just it's been it's been so long so i just want to go again how many miles do you typically make a day as a former d1 athlete who looks quite tall probably overall like 25 i mean i'd say probably overall with like zeros and everything i probably average like 25 miles that's fast yeah so yeah, I swear, I, I, I go hard, but, like, I know how to chill, too, for sure. <clears throat> like, that was one thing on the, the CDT I really learned how to do with um, my girl Critter that I hiked with. She, because I started off that shit right off the, the Grand Enchantment Trail. So my first day on the CDT, I did 36 miles. <laughs> oh, shit. I just, I started at, like, 6 a.m., like, sunrise, got my pick, and just fucking booked it. And... I mean, I already had my trail legs. I did 750 miles prior, so I felt good. But it's like, I don't know, I get in the zone and I, I don't really listen to music too much or I don't listen to much while I walk. There is something about the the beauty of just walking in nature. Very uh, location dependent and trail dependent. But just getting in the zone of walking is very therapeutic to me. And yeah, I just like, I walk until I'm tired. I walk till I'm hungry and then I stop. And then I walk until it's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of hungry, smoke a bowl, like drink some water. And I'm and I'm also a person, too, that can like, I call it camel up. I'll drink like four liters and then only carry one mm. with me kind of thing. Like, because that's just how I realized I can get away with it. I feel like it started off on the PCT with the Hyperlite. I, I kind of, I've been very blessed as a goalkeeper. Like, I don't have very screwed up shoulders, but I struggle to get my water bottle out of my hyperlight at I times. I can't get my, I have to take my pack off. So that this was my one. Problem. So that was one thing with the hyperlight on the PCT that I just learned to camel up. I would just drink a shit ton of water while I was at a water source so that I'd only have, because I never like to stop to drink water if I didn't have to. I yeah. just, you just stop when you, you know, to filter and whatnot. So did you have that issue with the Zerk as well? Not with the Zerk. I will say the Zerk was good to me. I, I am very impressed with the Zerk. I stuffed that because I used the Zerk on the Hey Duke. Mm. And I had three gallons and five days of food on my back. Three gallons? That's like, Jesus. what, nine, ten liters of yeah. water? That's crazy. Yeah. Like, I had three gallons and five days of food on my back at one point in the Zerk. My shoulder is definitely a little, like, shoulder neck area is a little permanently messed up after that. But she held up pretty nicely yeah. like stuffed stuffed like a fat woman in a dress five <laughs> sizes too small it is <laughs> funny to see some of the pictures of just bulging but zerk held up very very well with extra weight um did me did me well so but yeah just never ending <clears throat> so 
it sounds like you you mentioned that you love the life or death moments that you experienced on the Hey Duke Trail. From the Hey Duke, you went to the Florida Trail, which is a much more established trail. I know Mellow. there's yeah, I know <laughs> I know it's wild in its own ways, but mm-hmm. was it boring for you going from something that was so like wild and remote? Oh to- yeah, it was. It, I had no intentions on doing the Florida Trail, but uh, Dosu wanted to do it. He wanted to do something in the winter, and I saw it as a way to get out of the Midwest for the winter because uh, it's just so gloomy and crappy that I was like, okay, yeah, February 1st, let's start going southbound on the Florida Trail. Yeah. And I shit talk. I shit talk the Florida Trail so much prior to doing it. And it it's a phenomenal trail. Hmm. I, re- I mentioned I really like the Florida Trail and people look at me goofy and I'm like, okay, if anything, it's a trail you do in sections because mm-hmm. there are long road walks. Like there's yeah. a 60, mi- there's like one or two 60 mile road walks. There's like a couple 20 mile ones. Like, yeah, there's some giant gaps that are less than ideal and almost died on one of those road walks heading to um, Apalachicola. National Forest. You have a long ass road walk to get there. It was dumping rain. The, it's 55 miles an hour on this road, and some asshole was trying to like pass a bunch of cars in the pouring rain and end up skidding out. The guy almost hit me as he passed me, and so I was like, "Dosu got hit. Dosu's dead." Like I, I'm like, I don't even want to turn around because this guy's dead. So I finally look back, and his eyes are just huge. Like, what just happened? And sure enough, this guy like skidded off into a ditch, and some drunk asshole on a Friday night speeding in the rain. Yeah. But it was like, oh my god! Like, and then dogs, yeah, dogs, I've man. Heard that. The dogs on the Florida Trail are yeah. ruthless. Yeah, like honest to God, I have like the southern section. I think you need bear spray. Like I'm not kidding. Like I we use trekking poles, but they some of them are pretty ruthless. And I worked with dogs. I love dogs. I worked at a dog hotel in in college for one year. A dog hotel. A dog hotel. <laughs> Bougie ass. These dogs are eating better than I was, for God's <laughs> sakes. But this was on the north side of Indianapolis in Fishers, Indiana. Bougie ass neighborhood. These people drop their dogs off for the day and get pampered while they go to work. But yeah, like I've I have dealt with dogs of all kinds of like tall types of breeds all angers and like so i feel very comfortable around dogs so i'm very casual while dosu's out here like beating them like he's got his (laughs) knife out like i will kill this dog and i was like don't kill the dog it doesn't know better and it like almost bites my calf off and i'm like okay you're right let's get the hell out of here let's get the hell out of here i've heard that the uh that stun guns are actually effective with dogs not you don't stun them but like just yeah. the, the electrical current yeah. like spooks them honestly you can probably just get like a sound like an yeah, app sure. or something just to spook them out but yeah dogs on that trail ruthless there yeah. were like four or five different occasions that yeah. i was like oh my god i'm gonna have to like kick a dog <laughs> i don't want to kick a dog yeah. but you left me no choice right <clears throat> did you have the thought to skip roadwalks after almost getting killed no man there's no way i i'd hate myself if i skipped it. i will say there was a part i was like shit we should buy some heelys or get like a scooter or something mm. to because some of the but then again some of the road walks were also on like gravel roads and so it's like ugh, it'd just be so bumpy and yeah. tedious but yeah skipping i will say i hanging out with dosu made me a bit of a purist when it came to skipping road walks um, I did break that habit a wee bit on the CDT, which felt very liberating of <laughs> just being like, you know what? Fuck those 13 miles. Like, yeah. I will not do that today because I'm not feeling it. Yeah. And being okay with it, I still hiked beginning to end of the CDT, but, you know, not it's not the end of the world. So, yeah, <clears throat> definitely got better with that. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to talk about the Florida Keys Overseas Heritage Trail. I've never even heard of this trail. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you do at the end of the Florida Trail, just attack on bonus miles, or is this something that was on the bucket list regardless? Yeah, so that's the trail that connects um, when people do, like, the Eastern Continental Trail Mm -hmm. or the IAT, whichever you want to go by. It just is the 118 mile from that connects the whole keys Mm -hmm. so it's it was honestly just a giant bar hop (laughs) for us i swear to god i spent more money in that week (laughs) hiking to the keys than i did the 1100 miles on the florida trail because it was just like our friend um um black swatch came and joined us he lives in gainesville and gave us some trail magic 
he's a big time section hiker working on his he's on the cdt now he just finished the pct and he's done the at in sections but he uh came out to do that 118 miles with us and yeah i mean you're just on a road the entire time it's not much trail but we did get a license to fish so we were fishing the whole time like we just made it a big vacation the last those last couple days and it was super fun. Yeah. I definitely I definitely recommend it just yeah. to a good excuse. And we just, we just like post up and set up under a bridge or like under some bushes or on the beach. Like never got harassed, which was super nice because yeah. a lot of people are doing very similar <coughs> stuff. So, but uh, yeah, just a good excuse to go from the Keys to, or from floor, like from the mainland to the furthest southern part of the this the country yeah so the grand theft auto 6 trailer just dropped have you seen this no it did just drop i didn't hear or see it but i just heard it drop it broke some record for like the most amount of views for Mm -hmm. a non-movie trailer or a non-music video for one of the two yeah it's like 100 million views within 24 24 hours hours. i heard i heard it just blew the absolute fuck up it's (laughs) the budget for this game is like two billion dollars like the most by 6x or something like that and uh, it's incredible, and I'm I'm bringing this up because I'm curious to know what effect that's going to have on Florida tourism, and like if that'll have any effect <laughs> on the Florida Trail or the Florida Keys Trail or anything like that. But yeah, I've got Florida fresh on the mind after watching that trailer. Um, I did a little bit of research on this trail just before the interview. Just I just wanted to see what it looked like. Is it mostly road walking? It is. Oh yeah, it's honestly God, it's mainly a bike path. Okay, you'll see a lot of people just bike it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we just wanted a good excuse to continue walking a little longer. Yeah. So I've heard the keys are a lot of fun. The keys are very fun. Yeah. Very, very fun. It was a good time. I went down. My first marathon was actually January of 18 in Miami and my mom ended up coming with me and she was like, Oh, let's go down to the keys. So we did like a day trip, which I vaguely remembered, but like the seven mile bridge when we were walking on that, of course I had a pee, but like, (laughs) but I just remember like walking over that and just being like, wow, this is like pretty, epic yeah. and like i remember looking over the bridge and seeing this turtle i mean i was i don't know a couple hundred feet from the ocean but you saw this turtle and it was massive like it looked big from as high up as i was on this bridge huh. to the water and it was like so clear and i grew up not doing many beach vacations like we didn't do that as a family so like any part of the beach and just blue sky and blue water with white sand you're just mesmerized so yeah. i was like this is wild yeah it was very cool. Are you Grant, watching the trailer right now? No, I'm looking at just maps oh. of the trail. Like, granted, this is not like very like in the woodsy, but if we were ever to do a Florida road trip, um, I would absolutely prefer to be on this than yeah. the Florida trail. Yeah, it's Based- pretty tight. <coughs> it, it really is. It this is a, it looks is a bike really path cool. according to the photos and the description we just got. We could bring a bike. Yeah, there you, you go. got a bike. You, you do you own a bike? I own a bike. Yeah, I own a bike. Okay, let's go. Boom. Right. Yeah, biking <laughs> it. Problem solved. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, I was gonna say biking it is also pretty. We could do it in a long weekend if we biked it. Yeah. Two days. Like a good cyclist could do it in a day easily. Easily. I I, I think the max I've biked in a day was like 36, 40 miles. Yeah. That's a good day. Enjoyably. Yeah. So we could do it in maybe three days plus I mean, if we're adding bars, yeah, it's going to. Three days. Three days is good. Yeah. Three days is comfortable while still having fun. And that was another thing too, like. Would try to get at least one meal of like fresh cod or some oh, fresh stop. some fresh fish. Yeah. Like I said, spent more money in the 118 <laughs> miles. I know then. that at least Key West is not cheap. No, yeah. not I've never cheap really at all. looked at a map of this area. Like I didn't really know that this did this because there's no reason to unless you're doing it. <laughs> and that's just I never looked it up either until like, okay, fine, we'll do the Florida Trail. Yeah. Okay, fine, like let's walk to Key West. What the hell does this? I kept screwing up the name too, like this, the Keys Heritage. <laughs> what the hell are we doing? We're walking to the Keys. Like, yeah. yeah, it's its own, which I didn't even know it was its own separate thing until afterwards, which I was like, okay, I guess I'll like put it down. It's its own <laughs> shout out. But huge for cyclists. Cyclists do it on a weekend mm. kind of thing. Not that I expect you to be the expert in this, but like, what is a key? I would imagine they're the keys because there's Key West. Big pine key, Largo, key duck key, key. The top one. but like, what is a key? Is this like a natural feature? Like, is this like saying like something I mountain? A, I think it's just I, a chain of islands. Off yeah, of it is just a mass. chain because that's just it. You're you're walking through or over multiple islands. But is it like when you're calling something a gap and like a, like Neil Gap is mm. a 
a gap is a feature? Generally speaking, a key is a small, low-lying island formed on elements such as coral reefs and sandbars. Okay. The more you know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're learning all kinds of stuff today. So there you go. So from one short trail to another, <coughs> the Pacific Northwest Trail. That was my awesome. long, yeah, the Pacific Northwest Trail. That was then that turned into my longest trail in one one go. And that one was been, I've been hyped up about that one since I was on the Dosu PC2. Also? Yeah, I did that one with Dosu as well. Um, and once again, started in Glacier. Glacier is just so magical. I love Glacier so much. We started on the 4th of July. Our friend Slingshot dropped us off from Missoula. Mm. He drove us from Missoula up to the to Chief, which shout out because that's a long ass drive. But he he dropped us off. Glacier is just magical in every way, shape, and form. That trail was sweet. It was mu much more road and like crappy. I learned how to appreciate blowdowns after that trail for sure. Like there's five miles before you get to. Um, going northbound on the CDT the last five miles before you get into like Colorado. There's a lot of blowdowns. There's a bunch of snow. The comments on Gut Hook are far out, whatever the hell. We're just like, worst part of trail ever. And like, after doing the PNT, blowdowns are just nothing to me. Mm -hmm. Like, very minimal. Like, I got it all out there. I hated my life then because I was like, what the hell is happening? But, and I've heard it's gotten a lot better. I mean, I did see two different crews of PNTA. Um, or PNT a uh, organizations out there working at two different sections clearing up some real shitty areas so and that was back in 21 mm -hmm. I'm sure it's even it's gotten a little bit more maintained as of now but a lot of berries we did go fishing on that trail did a lot of mushroom foraging I brought a book which was fun uh, it definitely made that trail more of a fun engaging hike mm. that I enjoyed it was beautiful, a lot of ridges. We did, you're so close to so many lookout towers. That's actually where I met this one woman, Lynn, I believe her name is, but she was a wildland firefighter for a hell attack crew for like 15 years or 20 years or something. And she was just volunteering up in a lookout tower. And she was like, you know, we started chatting for a minute while we were taking a lunch break and ended up spending two hours up there chatting with her. And she was a big reason why I wanted to go into wildland firefighting. She's mm. this badass woman doing the thing, being like, you've got the potential to be a badass woman in fire. And so I was like, okay, shout out to this, to, to Lynn, man. Like she definitely helped me transition when I was like, okay, when I'm done hiking, I'll try this fire thing. Yeah. But that was on the PNT. There's plenty of times we would go off an extra like half mile to bag these uh lookout towers because mm. you're so close you're just going by and you're like i guess i'd rather camp up on this lookout tower than like have to hike another couple miles to find somewhere in the trees that's going to be shitty so that was one thing about the pnt bittersweet but <coughs> stayed in probably like five or six lookout towers mm. on that trail had my first real like experience hiking with smoke outside of was mm. it like halfway through I remember, but great trail angels on that trail. I mean, the diversity, you go from just like Alpine to the ocean within like a day and a half. So very cool trail, very underrated. I do hope it continues to develop a little bit better for being a national scenic trail. Um, you just kind of were like, Jesus, this is a bit rough for a <laughs> national scenic trail, like in comparison to the PCT yeah. or something. So, um, but yeah, another, another good trail. For sure. What was the tastiest mushroom you had on that trail? Um, definitely had a couple. I'm trying to think. We found some um, bullets. I can't remember what kind, but uh, we would put those in our ramen, and Ooh. it would be quite tasty. The yeah. Florida Trail was another one we did a lot of foraging of mushrooms on as well, which Lion's Mane was definitely my favorite mm. out there. But. <clears throat> um, how does the route finding of the Pacific Northwest Trail compare to something like the Hey Duke? I know obviously you're navigating forests much more than you would. You, there's no forest on the yeah. Hey Duke, but in terms of just like difficulty of keeping trail, how does it compare? Man, there were definitely times that like there is a one alternate that you can do like Lion's Head or like this other route, and you're just like on this ridge, and then you go on this backside, and it's just like eight miles of just like straight tree like down trees and you're just like what the hell is happening right now so you have like a general idea of where you're going it's just getting there is taking so long versus on the hey duke 
you are just in like a wash or walking on rocks and canyons that you don't have much uh, in your way. It is just making sure you're going the right way. Hmm. So definitely a little bit different in those regards from what I can remember. Um, I didn't lose my shit as long on the PNT as I did on the Hey Duke, I feel. Like, there'd just be times of bursting, like, I just want to go faster. Like, I just want to get through the trees and all this nonsense now, but it is very tedious. So I've learned a lot of patience. <laughs> a lot of patience on the PN, too, yeah. which has definitely set me up for success <clears throat> later on in my hiking career, for sure. Mm -hmm. So... And you alluded to the Oregon Desert Trail a bit. Uh, we've had Shira on the podcast, so we've, we went pretty in depth with that. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to know if you had any standout experiences on that trail. I love that trail. It was a really great, it was a good trail. I mean, like I said, I didn't end up, I got Giardia on that trail. Dosu had Frostbite on that trail. Like, it was very memorable. And then a huge section, Fremont National Forest ended up staying closed. So we ended up doing a different alternative um, route and going north over Alberta, Albert, whatever that l dry lake is instead of Fremont. So, uh, but it was, it was a good, I, what, we were the 41st and 42nd people to finish hmm. that trail. And there was one other gentleman out there, Matt, who was doing it eastbound and we were doing it westbound. So it was fun to, we actually did end up crossing paths with him about halfway through um, and then seeing him at the end of the trail as well. So, it, yeah, Oregon Desert Trail was uh, ups and downs once again, just like the sheer rawness of just being being out there in the middle of nowhere. Probably one of my favorite experiences, though, happened out there. We were probably saw a herd of 150 or more. Um, oh, my God, what are they called? The the horned sheep that are out there. I'm trying to Mountain The goats? antelope. No, the antelope. Ah. that are out there we saw like a fat herd like we were hiking in the direction to heading towards the the alternate um albert lake and we were just just like on this like kind of dirt road slash cross country and through the sage and like huge like 150 plus like herd and they just started like running across in front of us and like then curved around and like came back in front of us again and it was just majestic majestic as hell man like hmm. you're just like wow this is this is pretty cool mm. so but yeah that was a that was a fun trail that was a, that was a fun trail for sure beautiful assuming someone's got like two or three through hikes under their belt is that one that you'd recommend they add to their bucket list or are there other things they should tackle first oh man i mean you can tackle that there's so many out there though i mean i'm i'm definitely on like a brett tucker kick right now and i want to finish all of his treks um and his are all so far, they've been pretty good. I mean, he's a big water guy, so he definitely tries to follow where the water is, which is helpful for those that are maybe a little new to the route finding and if maybe have, like, the triple crown under your belt if you want to try to advance yourself. Like my boyfriend, he just triple crowned this year and it just wants to hop on the Hey Duke. And I'm like, yeah, like, it's going to be hard. It's going to be stuff you've never experienced. But, like, if you really want to challenge yourself and step it up a notch, like – that's how you do it. You just throw yourself in the elements and really hope for the best, mm. <laughs> like putting yourself in those situations. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Grand Enchantment Trail. We've talked about this trail, but it's been a minute, I think. Uh, we'll just be curious to get your highlights from that. Yeah, that was another great trail. Um, Phoenix, Phoenix to Albuquerque, 750 miles. Uh, definitely had some breakdowns there as well. I think it was in like Apache – a wilderness area in New Mexico that I just like for the life of me. I, I didn't actually buy um, Brett Tucker's map system. I was like, oh, I'm just going to trek it out myself on Gaia. So I went through and I probably got about 85% of it spot on. But I met this gentleman named um, Autumn Leaves. Incredible man. He did the AT back in 2002 and actually met Brett Tucker on the AT when he was working on the Grand Enchantment Trail. So it was it was cool to meet someone that knew him from day one. And then he mentioned like, oh yeah, he's got all of his blue blaze or like his blue little ties along the Grand Enchantment Trail and found a couple of those that were put up twenty years ago. It was kind of fun to to put all that together. But uh the Grand Enchantment Trail 
there were times that just really definitely tested me in the sense of like there's a burn area now so i didn't track something out or track something out nicely so autumn leaves i like used his map like looked at his map that he got right from brett tucker and i was like oh yeah crap this section is completely burnt out and washed out so instead you got to take this other way around kind of thing so i like added that on and i have since bought brett tucker's other it's not much but i was just being a cheap sob but i'm like <laughs> man i can support this man he's doing great things so i've bought all of his other maps for the other trails i'm hoping to do um but what are some of his other trails so he's got the low to high which is the one that mm -hmm. i did um the mongolian rim trail in arizona the northern new mexico loop in um new mexico from santa fe it's a big old loop there um the skyline traverse trail that's similar to the arizona trail and then i know i'm missing one more because he's got six i'm pretty sure but I'd love to complete his series. Mm -hmm. He's got some, and they're not long. Like they're nice, you know, between like, you know, five to 800 miles worth of trail, which is, it, it's a good, you know, good month. It's a good month of hiking kind of thing. So I've got a note here that that's your preferred length for trail. Yeah, it definitely is. Like Conquer, like the CDT is the longest one I've ever done straight through. And I ended up clocking in i think just about 2700 miles or something like that so i mean uh yeah 800 miles is a nice comfy number to like do something efficiently and have fun for it and then take you know a week or two off and be like okay let's do another 800 miles or <laughs> something something like that i have noticed that like i we were talking about before the show it's nice finding especially with a lot of the interviews we've been doing recently we've been finding a lot of good 100 200 to 300 mile long trails yeah both here and overseas that are just like adding on this bucket list but that's something i noticed with the ozark highlands trail and the john muir trail mm -hmm. and when i finished the colorado trail like that section i had finished is the 200 to 300 mile range i feel like is just enough to get past that like initial wobbly phase into the groove yeah but then you're done and it's like there's something that's like so painful about finishing once you feel like i've finally gotten back into the groove which is why i never stopped walking <laughs> i would just go from one 800 mile trail like to the next because yeah 100 percent feel that like once you start getting your groove you're like shit i'm done like i'm done already yeah but that's just like i would go from one 800 miles to taking a couple weeks off or something to do like another one or or like i went from the pnt took two weeks off i was going to actually do the oregon coast trail because dosu went out to did it but financially i was cutting it real close to the point that i was like i'm gonna hate myself on the oregon desert trail if i don't take these two weeks off just to work so um so instead of doing the Oregon Coast Trail, I worked for two weeks and then hopped right on the Oregon Desert Trail kind of thing. So that's been the like the last it's weird. Like I've only hiked one trail in the like I was really hoping to hike the Blue Mountain Trail this fall. I was hoping to do it last year after the CDT. But this year I went to Cabo <laughs> and the thought of just hiking like a section versus the whole through. That's a, a me problem. I haven't gotten like. If you start something, you got to finish it. I have to do that. I haven't gotten past that. So it's like, shit, I don't want to start the Blue Mountain Trail and then only get halfway through and then like have to come back another time and want to experience it from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So that's a me thing. But I, ha I didn't do that this fall. So I'm over here like, crap, and I don't know if I'm going to do anything in the spring. It might not be next fall till I do something again. So it's kind of just like weird to me for something that I am just like, so passionate and i just want to hike so much and pff, that's i there's so many trails i want to do there's so many trails i want to do so definitely sucks <laughs> <laughs> that's a good problem to have it's, a, it's a, definitely not a bad thing to have but man i just want to keep walking as yeah. much as possible yeah that's for sure i guess that brings up the question of <clears throat> how are you affording this i know uh mm -hmm. you're working up in Vail resorts right uh yeah i'm at copper copper, copper right now yeah uh like what what are you doing to make ends meet during the off season oh man just being a dirt bag full time like i said not i don't have a lot of expenses luckily like i really don't have much that i'm paying for and i just started paying for rent now i was just living out of my car for the longest time 
but um just saving up i just hiked until my credit card was maxed out actually <laughs> yeah do not recommend do not recommend and then but steal I'm almost another out. person's identity to yeah <laughs> pretty, i do the whole thing they bring him a row but uh yeah no i actually i was able to hike three years straight because i would work work for three months out of the last i would work for three months hike for nine months in a three-year span and during that time yeah i made probably like ten thousand dollars or something and would just dirt bag it hard like did not pay for i don't pay for hotels i nero all the time out of towns and i'm talking 0.5 out of town like count it like that is not a zero man like i made it in and out um i eat like shit i am getting a santa is getting me a uh nice uh he the dehumidifier or whatever i'm gonna dry my food oh, out we I talked remember. about that so, i put dehumidifiers on my list of good dehydrators yeah i know what you're talking about I remember i put that on my list of christmas presents yeah. for that patreon yeah. and you were like is that practical for anyone that doesn't love dehydrating shit i love that you just said santa's gonna <laughs> yeah that. i have I, and that's just validation even, even like my boyfriend's <laughs> like are you even gonna use that that much and i'm like man i'm hoping that it's there to really because i just want to compact the size the weight and I am blessed. I got a gut that can handle a lot. I'm jealous. It's it's incredible. I will say my sister got the short end of the stick when it comes to that. <laughs> She's got a shit gut, but I have a, a gut of steel and can eat some pretty crappy food and get away with it. But I'm like, man, I'm a kinesiology major, too. So, like, I know what's right and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're supposed to do versus what I'm doing. And, like, financially, yeah, it's been fine eating Debbie. Uh, donuts and like ramen every day for years and crap but is it necessarily great no like can I try so that's one thing I'm really trying to focus on is hopefully lightening my pack by using that and then also eating a little bit better as well is the goal so we'll see how well that actually works out but I'm hoping having the actual machine and the ability because it came with a cookbook yeah. Came with a nice little like fat book that shows you how to work different things. I know there's a half a million YouTube videos out there, I'm sure, from folks on and off trail that you can just educate yourself <laughs> on. So yeah. I'm going to try that route. You're following the natural progression of hikers as they enter into their 30s about, I, like, yeah. I can't drink as much. I have to start focusing it's on my terrible, nutrition. terrible, man. Yeah. I thought I was going to live forever. I'm yeah. invincible. <laughs> God damn it, right? <laughs> like... <laughs> You got to follow up on how the dehydrator goes because mm -hmm. I've been on the fence about getting one. I partially think that I will love the idea of it and not really use it as much. However, the part that I think would be the most fun is like I used to work in college at a Calzone's pl like place. Damn. I did food delivery till 4 a.m. every night at a Calzone place. Um, but the most fun thing to me was like the number of items that you can fit through the Calzone machine is endless is and so i was just doing all kinds of weird shit between the hours of 2 and 4 a.m <laughs> and so i think with a dehydrator you have that option of like what can i really dehydrate oh yeah you know? i'm very excited to yeah. go down this path oh you gotta follow up on that i think it'll be healthy especially like with my job too right now like i work until like two can snowboard to like four and then i have the evening to dehydrate to dehydrate <laughs> yeah yes. so i'm just gonna fucking have a <laughs> you field should try day dehydrating snow do you think that would work it could would, you dehydrate snow would know, there be anything would left it would probably just <laughs> melt because how it works is like the heat comes up through the middle and then goes on the outside of it to like equally yeah that was a dumb statement <laughs> Because you can, but well, you, you think can, if like, you suck deep. the air out of it fast enough, or the hydrate out of it fast enough, it's still hot in there. You yeah, might. Well, I'm not because you can like deep fried ice cream. Like, right, how do they right. do that? Thank shit? you. Yeah, but yeah, I'm sure there's a will and a way. But for 150 dollars, I don't think I'll be able to. Yeah, well, it sounds do like that. you've got the right mindset for this. Because the mistake I see people fall into is they get the dehydrator right before they go on a hike, and they haven't actually like perfected any yeah, of these recipes. And no idea. They've got months of food that they hate. So like if you've got time to tinker with your the things that you actually yeah. enjoy, that makes a big difference. Yeah, I'm definitely hoping because I'm living basically in like a dorm like setting uh, up in Copper, so it's like very compressed. And so I'm like, well, if I can try to minimize my food and play around with it for yeah. sure, like definitely going to be gu guinea pig in and figuring it out totally, so that I can get it dialed in by the time I hike. Hopefully in the spring, 
I really want to hike the spring, man. I love snowboarding and all, but I would love to hike in the spring again before starting off another wildland firefighting job. What are you eyeing? Well, that's, uh, I'd love to do the Hay Duke. I would love to do the Hay Duke in the spring. Cause like I said, I have already done it in the fall. So if I can do it in the spring, it just would, it would be ideal. Yeah. But if, if not, if not, I would love to do another Brett Tucker hike something not terribly long but enough to crave the edge before i start working for the summer yeah so we'll we'll see because i'm also trying to save up as well for the ta i'm trying to head to new zealand next year for the dirty 30 of mine and those seasons are flipped which are nice so that's just it i'd be missing out i'd be heading there like now yeah i figured like beginning of december that's when most people i know like three people that are out there right now on the on the ta Hmm. so that's what i've been planning for the last three four years or something i'm like i'm going to new zealand going yeah. to new zealand in 25 yeah. like 24 to 25 because that's when my friend young blood he'll be graduating his grad school he triple crowned before he was 21 Damn. and then yeah fucking badass he, he triple crowned before he was 21 and then went to grad school like did the college thing afterwards and absolutely killing it researching those pollinators out in the appalachias and now he's like, got to get that through hike in once I graduate. And I want to go to New Zealand. So it's been on the brain for four years now. Hell yeah. So hoping to save up enough for that. It's just the plane ticket. Once you get there, it seems fine. But yeah. I like the idea of no natural predators. To me, that sounds very nice. It does sound really nice. Like as someone who doesn't sleep well, I like the idea of... There's it, nothing there. It's crazy that New Zealand doesn't because Australia has everything. 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 <laughs> everything. Comical. Yeah. And, and, and when I was out in uh, in Canada, I met a bunch of folks from Australia and New Zealand. And yeah, it's super funny how just completely diverse. Everything in Australia wants to kill you. Yeah. There's nothing in New Zealand that wants to kill you. Yeah. It, besides the sun, the ozone layer there is just trash. So you will get burnt yeah that's not good for gingers burnt no you would be absolutely screwed i would harass you every hour to reapply sunscreen it sounds like you're a good person for me to hike with (laughs) my mom would like you (laughs) my mom would really like you after working at a dermatology office i reapply sunscreen i have been scarred (laughs) after cutting off ears and noses so (laughs) i've never been really what i know you've never been to a dermatologist no but, I've, but it makes it harder to go the first time because I've never been, so it's a mystery. Like, I don't know what happens there. Just take everything off, put your gown on backwards, and they'll check you. Yeah. Head to toe. Yeah. It is yeah. It's on my peasy. list. I've oh, got girl, a lit. Go. I've got, like, a post-it note on my desk that has, like, check boxes, and it's all the things I don't want to do. And I look at it every day, and, like, I try to check off one thing a week. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Nothing against you. You are a ginger and very fair skin. <laughs> I know. Go to the dermatology yeah. office. I, I've had a few basal cells already. So. Oh, BCC, b- basic. Yeah. So, yeah. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, yeah. You know? there's, it gets worse for it sure. It does if you don't take care of it. Yeah. It's so simple, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I used to, I mean, I never wore sunscreen growing up. So that's like the universe put yeah. me in that position to be like, here, you're going to work at a dermatology office. You're going to see things that are going to grow on you if you don't put sunscreen on. And you, you talked about fair skinned. So, yeah, you talked about being invincible. And I think everyone who's young has that mentality. But if you're young oh, and listening yeah. to this and you're into backpacking, please, for the love of God, use sunscreen or an umbrella or or long sleeve shirt. That's just it. I wear shorts. But I wear a long sleeve shirt. Like yeah. I have a tattoo on my forearm that still looks new and it's eight years old yeah. purely because it does not see the sun. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just reapply. It'll Just wear catch some, up to you. Yeah, it really will yeah. later on in life. Might yeah. not be till you're 60. And I know that doesn't, that seems so far away, but you're <laughs> We and got more. Scala, huh? Yeah. Yeah, just just go for it. and that's just, and like even getting an umbrella. I came super close to buying uh, one of. Six Moons Designs umbrellas um, just before the get or just before the CDT. But I was like, the reason I haven't yet is just because the wind seems like <clears throat> that was my biggest. Th- that's my it. biggest thing. Yeah. Um, but if I if I if and when I go to New Zealand, I would definitely get an umbrella. Yeah. It does turn that. into a bit of a sale. I used it primarily in the desert on the PCT and just Mary Poppings along the trail at times. And that's like such a pain in the ass. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the big hats. Like I ended up finding a big straw hat on the Florida trail and then hiked with that for the the second half of it. And then the Oregon desert trail. Mm. I used the big sun hat, Mm. which is like sometimes annoying when it's windy because it still kind of like whips you back, but whatever. (laughs) 
so I'm curious to know someone who loves three to 500 mile trails, how the CDT went for you. The CDT is probably my second favorite trail. Huh. I bought a CDT hat the other, like <laughs> I bought a at the hat. Meetup? With, yeah, I bought a hat with, at the meetup and like, I I have in my room, I have the little CDT um, uh, uh, bandana well, that so I you're got. A I, and I'm not gonna lie, the moment I got on the PCT, I was in Julian and I ended up parking or camping right behind where it says do not camp. And I got there right after it closed. It was dark. It was cold. It was crappy. And I was like, fuck this. I'm camping here. And that's where I met my friend Sixes was in the store the next day. Um, And he mentioned like the CDT or I learned about it not long after being on the PCT. And I was like, fuck. I want to go on the CDT. Like the, I just was infatuated about the CDT the entire time I was on the PCT. And in my off time, uh, after, what was it? Yeah, it was after season in October, we ended up going to um, uh, Silver City and checked out the Toad, uh, the restaurant there, the, the bar and grill there, and like went on to the Gila and like checked out a little of the CDT. And that's where I first bought a CDT sticker was at the Gila um, Visitor Center right there and put it on my car and it is still on my car since and obviously now i can justify that i've hiked the cdt and i have a cdt sticker on my car but the cdt has been on my mind since 2019 in such a passionate way that i was like i cannot wait to do this trail and i don't want to rush it like like do it so that's just it i did 10,000 miles of trail prior to doing the cdt but getting out there and being on the cdt Oh, the trail gods were on my side. I had such great weather. I had such a great class. I mean, I met my boyfriend out there. I met one of my best friends, Critter, out there. Such a great class? Just like the group of people out there. I love that phrase. Yeah, Yeah. class of 2023, northbound, baby. Southbounders definitely got fucked with weather because it started off rough in Glacier with like 100 miles being closed because of grizzly bears. And they got a bunch of snow later on and so on. But had such nice weather and just such great just a great vibe a great time i have to say once i got to darby i was playing a little bit of catch up and was doing a bunch of 30s for about two weeks to try to catch up to just like a group of friends i knew was ahead of me because i got off through the teton crest trail and was dicking around doing a bunch of my mom came to leadville for five days and i was just like taking my time hiking in wyoming with this guy and uh but then i started cranking it up for idaho and montana and was just whipping out some larger miles and it hit me when i was in darby i was like fuck i still have a thousand miles like i'm kind of tired like i'm actually like kind of tired um but then i after like a day or two i just like yeah started seeing friends again and it just put me in just put me in such a great mood that i did not want to stop and once i finished the cdt i intended to hike the blue mountain trail but it got financially like ah crap do i want to hike this trail and be extremely poor and desperate or do i want to play it safe and like not hike and have a little bit of money to start off the winter because i don't know what i was doing yet so i did play it safe but i'm not gonna lie i got to i got to waterton and i was ready to walk (laughs) i was ready to walk more i had intentions on doing the ice age trail in 2022 and then the blue mountain trail in 2022 but i just had so much fun on the cdt that i was like there's no need to rush like i've got a great weather window this year there's no fires like i'm just gonna keep walking and enjoying myself and take breaks when (laughs) when i don't normally take a break and not feel guilty about it yeah so that was a big thing about the cdt was the growth i had on that trail to hike more like how i wanted to hike and enjoy myself versus just yeah crushing miles every day to get to the end to finish because i was was like okay finish by the last week of october so i can get on the ice age trail finish that up in six weeks and then get on the pn or and get on the blue mountain trail by the end of october or middle of october before the snow gets too crazy and finish by the second week of november like i had it to the t in mileage wise but i was like man it doesn't have to be about this like it doesn't have to be could it could i do it yes do i want to right now i lost the motivation because i was just having fun and i was just having fun met a bunch of people and yeah i finished up the trail 
with the great with such a wonderful group of people hmm. wonderful group of people and just hanging out at luna's and east glacier and there was no need to rush and i'm really glad i did not stress myself out just for the sake of mileage yeah. like those trails aren't going anywhere i have to remind myself that they're not going anywhere. The PCT might. That's a trail that you never know what you're going to get. But everything else is going to still be there. Yeah. So, yeah. It sounds like you found ways to love every type of trail and different varieties of hiking. The too. diversity, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Every trail is different and beautiful and unique in its own way, shape, or form. I mean, just I mean, just like people, just like activities, just like anything. And you just have to – there's pros and cons to it all. But at the end of the day, you are still – walking from point a to point b you are still experiencing the fact that you have to find water like you have to find somewhere flat to camp like you have to make sure that you put your food away so the mice don't get into your bag like and it's been fun to not just think of hiking as yeah you're hiking in the mountains that's the only version of hiking which being from the midwest i always thought that that was the case kind of thing so it's been nice to see the um, the diversity. I mean, the whole country. In 21, I ended up hiking from the desert to the PNW to, like, the eastern high desert. Like, from swamp to alpine to the diversity of this country is just incredible. Growing up, I always wanted to go abroad anywhere, but the states and my mom was like but this country is so beautiful and i'm like man fuck this country <laughs> like i don't want this but it is i i take everything back it is the sheer diversity in the lower 48 is just absurd that we have the ability to explore everything in this country so even though it's shit it's a beautiful country <laughs> like to explore from redwoods to desert to swamp and so on yeah. so been very fortunate to I'm very fortunate to be a dirt bag, I have to say. Like, it is so nice, and I'm very lucky to do it with such success and bliss, and I chase it every day. Yeah. So. <clears throat> well, I think that's a beautiful note to end on. We've been doing this for a little over two hours. Oh, so my gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> th thanks for taking us on this journey. Um, let people know your Instagram if they want to follow yeah. your future adventures. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Um, it's uh, Nicole Coolio, spelled N-I-K-O-L-E, K-U-L-I-O. But if you also just look up Shotgun, it usually pops up on the Insta. Um, usually just post in stuff about hiking, which I haven't done much of right now. <laughs> but just this, just a dirt bag in the snow right now. But I'm definitely looking forward to all the many adventures coming up. I mean... Oh, I can't wait. There's just never ending trails and I'm going to be hiking as long as I live. So keep on, keep on following me if you want. I Hell love yeah. it. Hell Thank yeah. you guys. Shotgun, this has been a blast. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks guys. To the Trek propaganda portion of today's show, uh, I've got two really good articles that I can feature, but uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to pick one. And I promised Trance that I would do this one because of something that I can't mention. Uh, the title of this post <laughs> is 10 Awesome Snow-Free Winter Through Hikes. Sorry, <laughs> couldn't, Topical. Couldn't possibly know what the previous conversation was. <clears throat> um, I obviously want you guys to go read the article because this is very well done. Shout out to Diane Duford for another very well done piece. I'll highlight the first three in this article and you can go get the other seven. Um, one we just talked about that, that got an endorsement from our guest today is the Florida Trail. Probably an obvious one. I was not familiar with this one, the Ocean to Lake Trail. Oh, Ocean to Lake. Is that also in Florida? In Florida? Yep. yep. That's another one that Gut Hook has an option of. It's oh, like 60, 60 miles or something. Yeah, 61 miles from Hobe Sound Beach to, to the coast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep, yep. That, that sounds nice. And the last one is the Pinhoti. Yep. 350 miles through Alabama. Uh, yeah, so head on over to the link in the show notes to get some other winter through hiking suggestions to fuel your cold weather bucket list fever. Okay, what do we got next here? Question of the day. Whose invention was this? Um, according to the red Rachel notes, ironically, this was Chauncey's from August. Oh, okay. You, good. Me. Good. Nice work. <laughs> go, nice work. go me. Yeah. 
Um, what is your Taco Bell order? Yes. Um, and by the way, I want to give you a little background here. Is I was asking you what your order was and you wouldn't tell me. Yes. I was going to surprise you with what the food was. but Why wouldn't you fucking say that? <laughs> <laughs> what, so it, I just don't get the surprise it now? Rem- it would have removed the element of surprise. I don't like that game. <laughs> <laughs> now you know to tell me the things that I ask. When okay. it's food related, though, if you're asking for an order, I like my boyfriend just texts me, what kind of pizza do you want? Yeah. Yeah. Instead of pizza joint, pep- yo, give me that pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's at home cooking dinner for me. It's really nice. <laughs> yes. um, Thank you, partners. Thank so maybe you. it's good that you didn't get me Taco Bell because I'm going to have something even better later. I don't know what it is. I said surprise That was me. part of what factored into it, too, is I forgot that Jenna was making dinner. So mm, Okay. Well, next time, ask me what my Taco Bell order is on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this w- Rachel also said we should plug our Janu- January Patreon episode that mm-hmm. came out, quote unquote, last week for this episode. Uh, we tell a funny story from Palooza about a uh, Uber yeah. driver named yes. Candace right. uh, and a Taco Bell story. Of course. So my Taco Bell order. It's hard because I get full really fast, but then I get hungry really fast. Like I by no means am peckish. You're like a sushi I fill up eater. fast. No, like, yeah, but sushi fills me up, too. Really? Like, I did really good when we went to that sushi place because oh, we, we had staggered all our orders. Mm-hmm. So I had time to, like, re-hunger between. Isn't that the stereotype with sushi, though? Like, you get full fast, but then you're hungry 20 minutes later? I don't know. I just, I can't Usually, keep, at least for me. Sushi, yeah. I can't keep up with people. Like, mm. people go hard on sushi, and I'm like, eh. We should one time, there is an all-you-can-eat sushi joint, like, yeah. two yeah. miles yes. down the road. I was we should going do that. to say yes. there is yeah. an all- We could do that for a Patreon and bring the recording equipment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down for that. Okay, yeah. anyway, my Taco tonight. Bell order. I will always get a cheesy bean and rice burrito mm-hmm. because I'm a saucy girl and it is a saucy like meal. The number of shirts I have stained with cheesy bean and rice burrito sauce that has dripped um, goes to speak to the quality. And I will cover it in mild sauce. But I also love a Crunchwrap Supreme. And the issue I face, this is really a dilemma in my life, is that I don't have the hunger to eat both, but I don't Damn. have the decision-making skills to pick one. Mm-hmm. But the crunchy um, Taco Bell is cheap enough that it's not that big of an investment. But the Crunch Wrap Supreme doesn't reheat well because it, then the lettuce gets soggy. Uh, yeah, I just had one last night for the first time, actually, which is why I think that's going to be my like it's Taco good. Bell. It was good. It was some good. mild sauce. It's, it's a little it's hot like, in parts. It's five, it's cold it was, in yeah, five thirty-nine or something with tax over in Breckenridge, which yep. is like expensive portion versus yeah. down here, but. Yeah, five, you know, five, six bucks for that. And it did me pretty good. Yeah. Like, and I'm usually a black hole and Taco Bell can sometimes upset me, but it was solid. I felt pretty good after that. Before game night. Ate that there before game go. night. <laughs> so I'll do both. I'll do the cheesy bean and mm-hmm. rice burrito and I'll do the crunch wrap supreme. And then I'll like pick at each depending on what I'm hungriest for. I usually start with the cheesy bean and rice, get a bit of crunch wrap and then go back to the cheesy bean and rice. Yeah. I had my first Crunchwrap Supreme like two weeks ago, probably. What is wrong with Damn, you guys? It was, look at it us. was terrible. What? I, <gasps> I attribute it to the fact that I think whatever Taco Bell I was at fucked it up because it tasted like burnt. Uh, I no. think that they just didn't prepare it properly, yeah. but I, my, I'm over one with Crunchwrap Supremes. I would give it a second chance. You yeah. always yeah. got Everybody it back raves for, about Next it. time it you bring really... us Taco Bell, try it okay. out. Yeah, okay. no, I say give it a second chance because, like I said, I had mm. one last night and I was like, damn solid and it stayed together nicely yeah. like i was mm-hmm. eating it in the front seat of my car and it was it stayed together and did not make a mess it was the first taco bell thing i haven't finished in my entire life wow yeah wow yeah, it was bad it was bad it tastes wow. like burnt dog hair or something uh but my go-to and i don't even know if either of these are even on the menu anymore but i used to eat taco bell probably four times a week in high school and my order was this verbatim um two double decker taco supremes you guys are familiar it's the hard shell taco with the soft shell around it and beans in between the two tacos uh amazing amazing and a mexican pizza I was going to say they don't weird, have. What a weird, weird order. It's so Interesting. good. I don't know if either of those. I think they got rid of the Mexican pizza. The Mexican pizza is definitely not there. Okay, you fuck. go to Taco Bell but, for pizza. But they definitely have something similar. It's a Mexican similar. pizza. It's, so it's like Like an open faced quesadilla? Uh, it's like a, like a crunchy layer with cheese and tomatoes on top. And then another crunchy layer with a mixture of ground beef and beans underneath. Hmm. So it's like a double layer pizza. Uh, I eat them one layer at a time. Obviously, <laughs> it's so good. It's so I can't believe they got rid of it. It's, yeah, it's, damn. A, it's a travesty. It's, I blame the Crunchwrap Supreme getting so popular Stepped that people just up. stopped ordering. Yeah, because the Crunchwrap Supreme's been around for 
over a decade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even know where we're at, but yeah, I've never even heard of never heard of that. <laughs> the pizza man. I, I comically comically in the Midwest, I remember there being Taco Bell and like Pizza Huts. Yeah. The mm. two for one. Like the or the, the billboards Lunch were the we're, we're on like different sides, but you can order either like pizza or Taco Bell. <laughs> News as of one day ago, we're recording this in early December, Taco Bell brings back double-decker tacos with both hard and soft shells. Let's go. We're back, Damn. guys. We're back. Sounds like we're having Taco Bell next <laughs> yeah, week. Yeah, we definitely are. <laughs> we definitely are. Hell yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay, that's mine. Is Daddy. yours just the Crunchwrap Supreme? Uh, Crunchwrap Supreme definitely hit the, as of last night, I will say, it was pretty solid. Yeah. You know, what was your go-to the, prior to? So prior, I will have to say, it was always the, the cheese, the cheese and bean burrito as well. And honestly, when I'm feeling a little, their quesadillas suck, but I love quesadillas. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I will always get quesadillas, even though it's like five bucks for some crap. But I <laughs> love it. I'm yeah. a big, I love cheese. Yeah. So anything with cheese on it. Sound like someone from the Midwest. Yeah, no kidding, man. I'll give a quick honorable mention to a beefy Frito burrito. The crunch I, in there is great. I was into the uh, Dorito tacos when those came out. Those are fun, but they break. They break. They a break. Yeah. Like you yeah. get them for fun. You get them the way you get a toy in a Happy Meal. Yeah. You know, like that's not supposed to fill you. It's just supposed to be kind of fun. I think it's yeah. something. It would be good if you put it in a bowl and just crush it up too, because it, it turns into a disaster. I yeah. Don't know that, but yeah, does that still exist? I haven't been to Taco Bell. A bowl. No, the, the Doritos. Oh, yeah. Doritos. No, those they, are a staple. Yeah, the Doritos are there to stay, okay. for yeah. sure. If anything, mm-hmm. they're trying to add more Doritos, yeah. yes. I swear, to the menu. I wish Jenna wasn't cooking tonight because I would go to Taco Bell after this. this <laughs> There's a Taco good. Bell on my way home. Oh, it's right around. Uh, yeah. I've been there. It's yummy. Uh, okay, let's go to the Triple Crown. Yes. Introduce it, please. The Triple Crown of Camp Chores That You Hate. This is another you invention? It probably. Yeah. Sounds probably like loathing you. something at the time. It's yeah. definitely disliking having to clean up food. Yeah. At the, my pot at the end of the night. Okay, okay well, so yeah. you're yeah. starting. First one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, start, I'm going to start this off, man. I don't know what else, but I hate cleaning out my pot for sure. That's that is, a good one. Yeah, I, it is a good I one. I was hoping to take that one myself. There are certain you know. people that like to like drink, like they wash it with the water and then they drink the water and that just makes me want to throw up everywhere. I the idea that. of it. I do that. I know it it's makes sense. It's not great. It's not, it's r- like it does... I close my eyes and that cringy like I don't want to do this but I also am like it's going to be the one time I dump it out that I'm going to get yeah. animals in yeah. my camp I was going to say it's either you drink the disgusting water or you walk 100 yards yeah I'm of freaking... all the gross shit I do that's one that makes me gag to think about and yeah. it's yeah. It, it makes sense because you you just ate that stuff you drink water <laughs> combining the two should be a normal thing cannot do it. It, mm-hmm. it does also comically I mean this just shows you how much of a dirt bag that I am even in my current living situation, like I, we have a kitchen, so I'm living in like the community, ho- like community dorm room set up for copper. And there's three kitchens, but they're on the the basement, first and second floor. I have a nice little mini refrigerator and uh, whatnot in my room. So I keep. We had cereal for breakfast this morning, my boyfriend and I, before riding, and instead of like, <laughs> instead of just like rinsing it out in our bathroom sink, I'm like, okay, let's just put a little water to rinse it out, and then you dr- drink it, <laughs> just like you do on trail. No. And, and I thought about telling him to do that, and then I was like, don't do that. Yeah. Just leave it sitting there. You'll rinse it out later. When I get home tonight, I'm going to rinse out those cereal bowls. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no need to do that shit off trail. Yeah, and trail I, habits die hard. I do so many on trail shit off trail that it's just like kind of cringy at times. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, th- that's one of them. That's is, a good one. But what else? I'll go next. Um, just to put Zach last. Um, I don't. This is an asterisk because I don't know if this would be considered a chore. It's certainly a chore for me. We're going to have to round up to include a lot of things with three people, I think. Cool. Mm. Well, then this is a chore, and it is getting out of my sleeping bag in the morning. Okay. Yeah, anything like, you don't like, I think. I can pack up everything in my tent and remain yeah. in my sleeping bag and be good, but the final bit of getting out of the sleeping bag, yeah. like when I'm putting myself in the out, in the out, in the elements, in the out, I don't like that. That's when the hiking day. I want to be in the end. Is as soon as you start to get cold. Well, you're also not like you're not. There's a period that's between the sleeping bag removal and the hiking starting. Yeah. Where you're not warm. Yeah. And there's tasks to do in that time that I'll probably just pick from, but that I don't like that. Yeah. You definitely pack up everything in your tent while still uh, in the sleeping bag. Yeah. That's when it's nice to have like a good puffy because you can transition at least slowly. 
you do the rest of the chores with the puffy on and start hiking a little bit and then you're full swing yeah i i do my first miles with a puffy and in puffy pants yeah like no matter yes puff it up puffy pants i am <laughs> a, up, I am a marshmallow yes yeah, same yeah. that's that was my big thing if i'm anything i'm CDT. soft <laughs> I think I'm getting diabetic. I'm coming back to life because I had that cookie. Like I noticed They're good my, cookies. Those good are cookies. solid. If you're I, listening. Shout out to. You, what was she didn't n- put her name on it. Natalie. Um, no. no. It started with an M. Marianne. No. Maureen. Maureen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Tight. Shout out to Maureen. Brought us both a, a beautiful presentation of uh, two boxes of cookie, homemade cookies. Also, if you're listening to this, Maureen, um, she made me friendship bracelets, and I, I wore that. them to breakfast the next day when we went out to brunch, and I got complimented on specifically the bracelets. Heck yeah. So I felt really cool. Yeah. They called them candy, and I didn't know what that meant. What does it mean? Remember when the waitress called my bracelets candy? Vaguely. I was too busy sucking down Bloody Marys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with two. It's the turn. The first one for me is, I think, my number one for sure, is getting water when it's cold. Putting putting your hands into Mm. cold water. You don't even really want to drink, but you know that you have to go X amount of miles till the next water source. And uh, yeah, you're just putting your hands through. And then you have to squeeze Filter. the water. Yeah, it's just the whole process. So getting water, generally speaking, but especially when it's cold outside, is, sucks the most. And then having to filter when your filter is really slow. Stop. <laughs> Because that's exactly how I, that is exactly. That exactly are we differentiating those to two different things? They yeah, can collect fetching the sure. water, collecting, and, and then actually filtering are two different okay. actions, and that's exactly how. And I like, got well, then, then I'll go with filtering water for my next one. Great, because <laughs> yeah, uh, if you don't regularly back flush your Sawyer, or uh, if you've got the bee free, it flows like a motherfucker for about two weeks, and then it doesn't work at And you get to play it like a recorder when it gets little holes in it. Yeah. You got to plug mm-hmm. all the holes. Yeah, I got a whole squeeze. day one on the Arizona <laughs> Trail with that. It's it's so nice when it works, and it sucks so bad when it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's it's definitely the most zero to one hundred. Yeah, real quickly with for the sure, bee free. For sure, for sure. Uh, but yeah, filtering water, especially like if you're in the groove of hiking and your filter is slow, it just takes so much time and you're thirsty and yada 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 that was gonna be my caveat is it's not technically a camp chore if you're not doing it at camp but i was gonna make it work where it's like the you're almost to camp like you're almost to camp just before camp you grab and your you're making dr- maybe you're dry camping and you finally make it to the stream that's your last stream before you get to camp and you're gonna like fill up for your dinner for your you know morning teeth brush for your nighttime drinking your morning hike out to whatever the next water source is so you're filling all this fucking water the sun is going down it's getting colder people are already at camp you're thinking i'm ready to be done and you are just squeezing like the world's slowest water through a smart water bottle and you've got like three bottles left to fill and yeah. you're just like this is you're like white knuckling it squeezing. yeah and it's not going if anything yeah. it's going slower because you're watching it yeah. um oh yeah yeah, yeah. definitely. Nice yeah, Hey Duke took two hours to filter seven liters. Oof. Yeah, backflush those Sawyer's yeah, kids. Yeah, backflush, man, yeah. makes a difference. Even every so every time I'm done using it, I I just turn it and hit it. Yeah, like hit it, blow it a little bit. Yeah. I swear it makes a difference. Definitely. I learned that on the Florida Trail because that shit's nasty. <laughs> yeah, some nice to water. I'm gonna go with. A camp okay, this one's an asterisk too. I'm really reaching here. Camp tour I hate is tent site selection because I forget. Like I'm so tired when I get to camp that I'm looking for flat and not a lot of sticks and shit. And the number of times, specifically and particularly most recently on the Ozark Highlands Trail, where I will be looking at the ground, this is flat enough, this'll do i'll do donkey you know and you like pick the spot you set up the tent you're good to go Mm -hmm. sun starts to set and you think to yourself i forgot to look up Mm -hmm. and you look up and you see some dead shit and you're like and now i'm gonna redo this whole task again or you don't (laughs) or you don't and then there goes your good night's sleep you know but i i never look up and i can never remember to look up and the reason i hate this camp chore is not because the act of putting up my tent stinks Honestly, that one's kind of fine. It's more the mem- like the memory. My memory does not remember look up until the worst possible moment. Maybe it's just started to rain a little. Maybe the sun has now completely gone down and I can't fully see above me. Or maybe I'm finally just warm and everything looks nice inside my tent and I have to deconstruct my home. Um, but I never remember to look up and it is 
either frustrating or entirely anxious all night to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, Thank you. that is a good one. And I didn't. Realizing. Yeah, I didn't start thinking about that until actually on the White Mountain Daretisma. Where there, we were in like a tropical storm and it was like oh crap like we heard branches falling yeah. around us and even on the florida trail there was like a tornado that was a couple miles from us and Whoa. trees dropping and it's another negative for the florida trail <laughs> how often do they get tornadoes there not too much but we definitely hit some shit weather when yeah. we were out there it was rainy in february huh. so rainy the swanee river was just swollen and i'm 510 and i was over tits deep in some water crossings <laughs> that's bad for me yeah it was it was wild for sure yeah um i'm gonna say it's it, i guess it's like kind of gross but i honestly tend to for like brushing my teeth at night is kind of hard for me I brush them in the morning all the time. And even during the day. twice a day on trail? Damn, so, you're good. Sometimes. And I'll floss. Like, I'm a big, I keep it in my fanny, like a little tooth something, yeah. like, to pick through. I floss more than I brush my teeth on trail, for sure. But brushing my teeth at night, because I eat, I have my hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I've ever brushed my teeth twice on trail in a day. Is that gross? Um, no, I, th I think I either do it a lot or I not. don't like I'll either brush twice a day or I'll go three days without brushing <laughs> like it, it's, 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 it's kind of rough for yeah. sure. But definitely trying to get in the habit of brushing at night is just it's not a thing for me. Yeah, it's it really not a perfect thing. sense. Like you're eating like, garbage. I don't know. Do you like how many people actually brush their teeth at night? Well, so you kind of have once again stolen one of mine, but slightly different. The one I was going to do is brushing in the morning. OK, because then all your water is cold and I don't like brushing with cold cold water like i this is really freaking weird but i keep a like a, a glass water jar off amazon with like a nice lid next to my sink because it takes a while for the water to heat up and i'll like heat it up to the right temp just the right temperature i like and i'll fill this jar yeah and then I'll, i water floss i'll brush my teeth i'll do everything with the water in the jar so <laughs> i don't have to listen to the sink running like just psycho shit but on trail in the morning when your water bottle is like super cold from the night i hate it and so they're like usually i'll wait till first water break where yeah. i take off my warm layers and i'm like ready to yeah that refill. hour hour in or something yeah or that first little break because that's just it my problem is if i don't do it just before I, it's usually the last thing i do before camp like as my bag is packed and the last thing i put in my brain is my toothbrush like do that just before walking because if i wait it's not going to be till about an hour and a half, which is when I usually have my first snack. And then you snack and then it's like, I don't want to brush my teeth because I'm just going to want to eat. So mm -hmm. then I just don't brush my teeth that day. That's, that's when it's like, oh, shit, it's been three days since I brushed my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God. That's, that's where lunch doesn't work for me. Because if I wait till lunch, then I want to eat lunch. Then I don't want toothbrush taste yeah. with the lunch. So if I do it first break between, between mm -hmm. leaving camp and lunch, that's the sweet spot for me. Okay. And that's like the mitigation for the task. But yeah, that's a camp chore that camp chore that just sucks yeah and there are people that will and this goes back to the swallowing the stuff <laughs> there are people that will brush their teeth and just instead of like disposing of they'll just swallow it as That's they go wrong. it yeah. is very wrong and I, I don't like it i started off doing that and then i've done it a couple times recently and it does make me sick it yeah. does up, yeah. it does actually like upset my 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 stomach when i As do that it should. And and i don't think you're supposed and to you're do not it. supposed to it does say on the label like yeah. do don't not swallow eat this. it has fluoride and, in it yeah it literally has fluoride so it's like okay i'm just going to spit and put in the dirt it's yeah. not that critical yeah. but yeah i definitely was like maybe i'll try swallowing again and not leave so much waste yeah don't do it. Yeah, Don't yeah. do it, people. It's not worth it. <laughs> I'm going to do one for my last one that's the like... shotgun gets two. Oh, yeah. Shit. Sorry. Oh, I get another one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's another chore? Uh, honestly... Oh, man. I mean, when anything's wet, but... Hmm. Brushing teeth, flossing, filtering. Man, we've really hit them all. I'm trying to think of anything else that bothers me. We did put you on the spot. You didn't get the prep time that we got. I so know. we can go. And if yeah, you get think about one, it. Let me think of okay. one. Okay. Mine, um, mine is both a long distance hiking and not thing. Um, and asterisks, it depends on the fire restrictions in your area. Obviously, don't make a campfire if you have a fire ban. Um, but I think it works in both like car camping settings and long distance hiking settings, which is putting out the fire 
before you go to bed because oh, yeah. it takes way more water than anyone ever expects when you're through hiking it takes more water than you expect mm-hmm. it also like you want to make sure it's out out and like you think about like in my mind it's always do i want to be that asshole that started this forest fire because it wasn't out out you know so you have to use up a lot of water and then if other people are up and like there's not that like mutual trust that they will put as much care into it you often stay up later than you want to to make sure that like you can double check it before bed Mm -hmm. um and i find this a lot with car camping because i think i think when people haven't done a long trail and like gotten stopped by fire closures and like had to deal with that kind of shit like they don't really understand the severity of having to put them out out and or they might not even just be aware i didn't know what fires were it's not a malicious thing i didn't know what fires were until i started through hiking it's not malicious 22 20 or 23 24 years old and i didn't know what fire were exactly and so going into like non through hiking camp season where like regular friends are making these fires that are probably bigger than they should be and you're sitting there like how much of a wet blanket can i be and like maintain friendships um and then just like at the end you've stayed up the longest whether or not you've wanted to go to bed just because you're like i don't not that i don't trust these people but like i trust myself more you know yeah and then you're like i i always catch myself i'm stirring it i've got like the fire stick i'm stirring it i'm making sure that like all the little ashes and embers like there's no little orange ember left and I continue to go until yeah, I've like, stirred up, the fuck about like, and I've had people be like, "This it it's good, like it's not going." And I'm like, "Well, under that one rock, you could see those two little orange things." I'm like, "Just it's one of those things for me where I think I come across a little cuckoo because I'm like going past the point of everyone being like, you can stop now, but I'm also like." we've seen this closed trails we've seen this burn tons of shit like we know how much a little thing could pick up with some wind in the night and i just don't ever want to be the person that's the cause and i think i reflect that worry in my actions so i don't like that chore because i can't chill you also sleep deeper knowing like if the wind picks up like you said and you're not yeah. confident that you got rid of all the embers it's the idea of like waking up in the middle of the night being like oh shit everything's on fire and also when yeah. you're car camping you're for me at least not always the most sober so like yeah. then you have drunk worry where it's like did i put this out really well or do i just think i did because i'm kind of tipsy yeah. yeah and so then you could double down yeah. um so that's just a very stressful thing for me sure my last one i can't believe i didn't get this on the first pass uh is I'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate to this. I know why Chance didn't pick it. Is inflating your sleeping pad. Yes, <laughs> I find joy in doing that, man. Really? I love getting lightheaded. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was gonna say. I counted like it's about 25 to 32 breaths to get my. That means you've got nice lung X. capacity because yeah, I think I'm smoking in the 30s. that weed, baby. <laughs> hiking, <laughs> hiking all those miles. Yeah, uh, yeah. When you're hungry and tired, like there's oh. so many other things you want to do other than, to your point, getting lightheaded, which is what happens 100 percent of the time. Yeah, it's just yeah. I'm happy when that thing is inflated. The brief times I've used one, for me, it's not the initial blow up I hate. It's the middle of the night where you're like, why am I cold? And then you feel around and you're like, oh, this thing is, I'm touching tent, mm-hmm. like through flat inflatable. Yeah, it's deflated a little to, bit. And, and then you have to wake up puffs. enough because you can't half asleep. Like you can half asleep drink water if you're thirsty in the night. You can half asleep eat a Snickers, right? Like none of these things require full consciousness. You cannot half asleep reinflate a sleeping pad. That requires wake ups. Yeah, I've done it a lot of times. I'm I'm constantly inflating and deflating my sleeping pad throughout the night because if it's too inflated, that it's too firm. I need like a nice soft air a pad. Happy in between. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just toying with it all night long. I don't sleep well in the backcountry. Oh the God, sleep. I yeah. sleep so good in Do the backcountry. Hell, yes. I've just realized too after now living like sleeping in a bed over the the summer in the bunkhouse and now having a bed now. I sleep so good in my car. I like, love. I just in my car. like I sleep so well in my car yep. in the back country for sure. Of just because I sleep just on a blow up mattress yeah. or just a blow up thermarest in my car with my sleeping. Is bags. it the Mondo? Uh, no, just the Thermarest X Lite. Okay, I've got the Thermarest Mondo. It's got two valves. Yeah, okay. and that thing in a car is like better than a hotel. <laughs> the, yeah, the, look up the Mondo. They sell them at REI. The Mondo, it's freaking yeah. nuts. Okay, good to know. Cause yeah, I've just been using. Hell, it's orange. It's an older one. I got it in seventeen, but it's nicely. It doesn't 
blow up as like large off the ground as like the X light or something, but it's got layers, so it only goes up maybe like a quarter inch or something, but it's warm. Mm. So it's not like you're rolling over and you're falling off almost. You're like close to the ground and you're close to, I guess, the seat in my back seat. But yeah, super nice. I love sleeping in the back country. The ther- I will say, I guess, I guess what I could say is deflating the mm. uh, the thermoress in the morning is that's that's always the the the, the heart and like uh, the day is begun yeah. the day is finally I try to make that one of the last things I do yeah. is the the thermoress the sleeping pad and then getting out of my sleeping bag yeah um so yeah I'll deflate it and then finish up whatever else to to put it away and then use depending on how cold it is the sleeping bag will go away last but. Yeah, very or very depending on the weather. If hmm. the, the sleeping pad versus sleeping bag goes away first, all I'm gonna say is next time you're living out of your car, if you've got those REI like member points that they give you, that free money they give you every March, yeah, get the Thermarest Mondo, put a fit, put a fitted sheet on it. Hell, man, I get thirty percent off working there. It is. <laughs> Check her out for sure. It's the best thing I've ever done. No doubt. Anyone car camping, this is a f- this is free advertising for Thermarest. They are not a sponsor. I I will keep that Mondo until the day I cannot. Hell this yeah. Looks like a legit air mattress. It's fucking nuts. You can't yeah. take this back. Because they have yeah. the Exo. I don't remember who makes oh, they- that. The Exos mm. pad. I mean, it's but. a it like this could be a twin mattress in a college yeah. dorm. <clears throat> Any honorable mentions? That was it. Okay. <laughs> um, I've got cleaning your nether regions. Like after a really but like sweaty, wiping your ass. Like I will wet wipe down my gooch and all the naughty areas after like an especially sweaty day. Uh, it's just like anything that gets in between me and going to bed. Just I don't enjoy. Yeah. Um. Putting away a wet tent. Yeah. Ugh, anything that wet. one sucks. <clears throat> anything wet. Yeah. It's just. Or packing up a cold tent without gloves, like grabbing the aluminum poles. Mm. That hate, sucks. Hate cold hands. And yeah. Gloves. Uh, and been a minute since I've done this, but a, a bear hang. I just learned how to do bear hangs on the CDT. <laughs> I've never done one. <laughs> on the AT, anytime I'd need to, I was around a guy who'd do it for me. Uh, I bumped people's ropes off of them. I had the bag. Yeah. And I was like, can I hang this with your feet? You just need the right demeanor, and you never really need to do one uh, yourself. You have the right trail and the right demeanor. Yeah. And I always just use, like, my bear vault or something, too. Yeah. Like, in Glacier and everywhere else I've hiked. I'm like, oh, it's in a, you know, it's in my can. Like, yeah. It's good enough. But, yeah, yeah. the bear can is fun because you can just throw it. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. All right, it's over there for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exa- that was the best part about the PNT and, like, Glacier and, and everything is, yeah, I would just, like, toss it 200 yards away from my tent and be like, okay, I'm not fucking concerned. Zach, you know this word from the Patreon, yeet. You could yeet the bear vault. Oh, yeet, yeet. Yeah. It, Remember it was remind the me the huck. definition on that one. Is just Send huck. a like far distance. Throw, okay. Yeah, to yeet it. Okay. I yeah. was thrown off because uh, Rachel had used it in different contexts and so not to relearn it. Yeah. yeah. No, you could yeet a bear vault there to a go. safe distance. I'm so hip. <laughs> yep. Uh, Shotgun said bet at one point during the interview. I picked that up. I said Stan. Yo, did you catch so me say Stan? Say BBC <laughs> News said that the word of the year is Riz. It wasn't on the list. Really? The, the 20 word list that we got off a of lad Bible. Really? It wasn't on there. I saw that on, yeah, on the BBC News. I could or see something it. Something like that, like Riz. And yeah. I did not even realize how popular that word was until working over the summer. There's this 21, he just turned 22 when I started. He's like, I got the Riz. And I'm like, what? the fuck <laughs> are you talking about and yeah like the pizzazz to to interest these women in me or something i'm like joe what are you talking about and then he starts whipping out drip and i'm like and we i covered, am we not covered that drip. old like what is happening right now the mind-blowingness that happened to me when i realized riz was short for charisma was like oh oh, oh. oh. it's short for charisma it is it's short for charisma riz charisma because that, like, if you got Riz, new. you got charisma. <laughs> the moment you said that, I'm like, oh my god, two and two equals four, baby. Well, you said pizzazz, and I thought you were just trying not to give away the word. No, but it's a close word. It it's is a synonym. Very, it is very close. Some could call yeah. it a synonym. Yeah, no, I, I would yeah. call it a synonym for yeah. sure. But yeah, I just heard Riz because I was like, yeah, I did not know it was for short charisma. for charisma. Yeah, the more you I know. God damn, <laughs> keep learn something. Hip. Yeah, man, I'm so young. <laughs> I'm gonna Same stay man. young forever. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. But yeah, yeah I work with a bunch of like 20 year olds. So bet. They say bet and fire. That's fire. <laughs> and I'm just like. Shouldn't be throwing that word around so loosely with a firefighter. Yeah, I was like, damn, stop, drop, and roll, bitch. <laughs> like, it's too much. All right, mailbag. Uh, yes. Hi, Zach. And no. Hi, Johnson, Zach. Why did I read that different? Dyslexic. So, not a poop story, but I think you may find it funny, anyways. After spending seven years in the Army, including two deployments to Iraq, I decided I really didn't want to be anywhere without, oh, hold on, I clicked a button, anywhere without AC for a long time. Then five years later, my son was born, and I started realizing it was time to look into the outdoors again as I wanted to start getting him used to sleeping in the woods before he was old enough to think it was scary. Fast forward another eight years, and I took my five-year-old daughter on her first daddy-daughter overnight backpacking trip. It is a short two-mile hike to a reserve backcountry site at Neguigan State Park here in Michigan. Sorry if I butchered that name. We get to the parking lot and the trailhead when she tells me she needs to pee. I take her about 50 yards down the trail and then off into the woods for some privacy. Before I can say anything, she drops trow and starts to pee. The problem was that this was her first time going in the woods without a privy, and we hadn't had a chance to talk about the finer points of the matter. So there she is, shorts around her ankles, peeing, while, sudden, while standing tall as a statue. Needless to say, I was glad we had an extra set of clothes back at the car so she didn't have to hike in wet clothes and glad that the campsite had a privy. Huge fan of the show. I was introduced to it when you had Luke Strider Jordan on during COVID. I actually did my first ever civilian hike with a guiding group Luke happened to come along with on a local stretch of the North Country Trail and saw him post his episode on socials. I've been hooked ever since. Thanks for keeping me tied into hiking culture during the long Michigan winters or when I'm at a Cub Scout camp instead of on trail. Sergeant Sparty. Love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leo's been peeing outside quite a bit. He He's still potty treading, so, like, he goes from the urge to needing to go within, like, a minute tops. Uh, and I haven't figured out I, if you're a parent and you're listening to this, please uh, tell me if there's a better way. But I've tried just, like, standing him upright, but even if the wind's going in slightly the wrong direction, it's just going to get all over him. So now he just – I just hold him and he leans forward. <laughs> oh, my God. So he's at like a 45-degree angle. <laughs> Where is he ending up outside while you're potty training him? Just if we're walking Sierra. Oh, I thought you meant like he's inside. He has to pee. There's no, not no, enough no, time no, to get no, to the bathroom. No. You toss him outside. Yeah, I, tr I try to get him you outside. Just him outside. <laughs> you just eat him outside. You him outside. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, we'll be in like the middle of a park and be like, uh, uh, uh. so I just <laughs> drop trow and like lean him forward to a 45 degree angle and he just goes and it, yeah, we, oh, we get it done. Guy. Yeah. We, we failed trying other methods. So this has been the uh, most surefire thing. Love that. Five right. star review. Wild. Love, love, love this podcast. This is from No Food Left Behind. Love that name. Yeah, I love that name. Yeah. I listen to tea, baby. That's right. I listen to every episode and enjoy backpacking in my mind with the people. That's it. Thank yeah. you so much for the review. If you guys want to hear your review read on this podcast, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave any number of stars, just not one, two, three, or four. Um, I see we also get ratings on spotify so if you don't have apple podcast i'm greatly appreciative of a five-star rating there you don't get to leave the contextual reviews but uh we'll take any sort of praise that you can give us yeah if you're a if you're a spotify listener and you want us to read your review on a episode um you could always leave a five-star rating take a screenshot of it and send it to podcast at the co with your review and we will consider that a job well done yeah you can also easily reach us by going to backpackerradio.com and the mailbag is at the bottom of the homepage, I think. It's somewhere. Somewhere. It's somewhere on there. You'll find it. Sticker code. Um, use a hip phrase that the kids say in a sentence that makes sense. Or, or doesn't. Or doesn't. Skirt. <laughs> <laughs> but like trail related. Like a trail related hip phrase. For example... Well, I guess yeeting your son isn't really trail related, but something to that could be. Sense. You can yeet your phone because it's not loading the map correctly. I almost did that at Camel's Hump on the long trail. There you go. There's <laughs> a good example. Straight up, almost yeeted that phone. So it does not need to be a yeet, but it has to be a phrase that is new enough to confuse. Uh, thank you to our Chuck Norris Award winners on Patreon. I was reading through because I think we got a new one. I wanted to make sure that it was included. Didn't I forward you one? Who, me? Yeah. Uh, I think I sent oh, to the group. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you, Rachel said these are tricky because there's some that like start and stop and start and stop. And so it. it's hard to always keep track. Um, you pull that up. I'm going to read the list and then yes, yes, yes. we'll insert that. 
Alex and Misty with Navigators Crafting, Andrew, Austin McDaniel, Austin Ford. Oh, Austin McDaniel sent me a very funny Instagram reel recently. Just a very good poop story. Maybe we'll air I this. Love up. That. Um, I love that. It's from story. an yeah from another podcast, but we'll we'll borrow it because it's very funny. Uh, Austin Ford, Brad and Blair from Thirteen Adventures, Brent Stenberg, Brian Alsop, Fables, Christopher Marshburn, Coach from Marion Outdoors. Did you find it? Yes. You want to say it? Greg Knight. Thank you, Greg Knight. I don't know where this belongs. Oh, yeah. Send it to it's the on the list. Chat. It, it's That's... on the list. Okay, cool. Dane. Ish. Derek Cook. Eric Casper. The friendly ghost. Eric Hoffman. Greg Knight. Again. Are we going to do that every time now? I uh, Maybe. <laughs> We'll have to see. We'll see how we'll it see flows. What, we'll see what sticks. Yeah. I don't know if we'll have enough time. Greg McDaniel. May bring honor to his name. Iron Hike Endurance Productions. Liz Seeger, Matt Zuka, Mike Poisel, Patrick C. and Cialo, Sawyer Products, Spam, Timothy Hahn. Solo. And Tracy Trigger. Hans. You can follow us on social at Backpacker Radio on Instagram and TikTok at Backpacker Pod on X, Facebook.com slash Backpacker Radio. You can follow Chance. You can find me on Instagram at Juliana underscore Chauncey, and you can get my book, Hiking from Home, a long distance hiking guide for family and friends in a fun little bundle with Zach's. Appalachian Trials and Pacific Crest Trials are my books. Uh, yeah, check out our bundle. <clears throat> also, backtrack a little bit. Uh, we did a Patreon interview episode for December's Patreon, and the early reviews on that one has been very positive. We've really? Got, yeah, we've gotten a few Patreon comments about people saying how much they enjoyed that one. That was the when we called them? Yeah. Oh, fun. A, and shout out. I, I just jog my memory because we ended with Tracy Trigger Fawns and she told us that amazing story about dancing with Johnny Cash. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Uh, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on YouTube so you can now see this incredible Look at this Pacific Northwest P and W vibes yeah, right now. Yeah, it's, Misty Stevens. This is how I saw Stevens pass. So this is definitely giving me some like Washington vibes here. Hell yeah, it's pretty tight, guys. Thank Check you. it out. Check it out on the vid. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and happy hiking. Bye. Yee.